Hello everyone and welcome to the stream. Today is the finale for Umineko, episode four. Cough on yet? I'm sorry, uh, I didn't have uh, dis I didn't have the Discord audio on until I finished saying uh, the episode thing. Do you want to repeat what you just said to the class? Uh, did did, did uh, did we get the cough on yet? <laughs> God, you suck. <laughs> what? What? I'm just wondering if we got the cough on. Cop on? Cop on. on these nuts! No, I said cop on. Like, were you gonna call the cops cop on, on these nuts? Yeah, either way it works. Oh my god. The Pokemon, you know. And this is the last time we ever seen <laughs> Wait, yeah, yeah, hold on. Died of Legma. So it is also worth mentioning that this particular uh, episode is also relatively important, that this particular, uh, episode is also relatively important as they all are so what we're going to be doing uh, is the people only the people who will be talking at some point within the, the course of this episode will mm -hmm. be unmuted but for the vast majority of it it will exclusively be me and con yeah so uh we will ask you to all mute and um if you are not muted we will serve mute you mm-hmm yeah so just sit back and relax because we're this is gonna be a fucking doozy you let me just go ahead mute. and we we'll just go ahead and uh, turn off. Uh, Orange, are you gonna let us watch this thing for the last time? Yeah, what? Huh, what? Yeah, it's on. Like, the stream's up. What are you talking, talking about? Stream up! Talking about the, the OP. Orange. She's talking oh, about yeah, the, the OP. Oh, yeah, the OP. That's right. Yeah, sure. Why not? We can watch it one last time. Fuck it. Oh. Hang on. A just make sure. Am I coming in clear? You are coming in just fine, actually. Hot diggity. And because of the nature of this, because it's going to be another two to three set hours, I won't be taking as many notes this time, so everyone else is free to go ahead and do so. As, as also, many, d d d d d the pace will demand that you do not take notes. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Mm -hmm. So everyone else, please take notes into your heart content on this. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of really important shit. So no she also, got me caught it's not just not a can go ahead and write those things. I like Omaneko. I don't know if you guys knew that. Uh, if, we, if you didn't like Omaneko, you wouldn't be here. Literally. I don't know, I mean, Crimson's here. Wait, what, what does that mean? You, huh? What? what? Why are you doing that to me every time? <laughs> Wait, 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 why, why Crimson specifically? Why? No, no, I have to ask why specifically Crimson. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. We're just curious. We're just curious. Why did you aim at, at specifically uh, uh, Crimson? I'm not here. It's fine that you pulled the trigger. I just want to know why you chose the target. Mm. I had it set to random. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, we talked over the entirety of this. It's fine. All right, let's just get to it. Okay, enough, enough pussy around. We'll just get right to the business. That's the run out the right one. Okay. All right, silence in the library. I'm sorry. It's fine. The second day, October fifth, nineteen eighty-six. I don't have a clue what's going on. Please, someone explain in a way even I can understand. What happened yesterday? I was in the kitchen of the mansion grabbing some food without permission. You open up that massive business class refrigerator, you can find anything. You can eat and drink as much as you like. Even if the typhoon didn't clear up for a week, I'd have more than enough to eat. With wine in one hand, I was helping myself to some dry cured ham. I wonder just how expensive this wine and ham are. Few ingredients are out of luck, too. 
If only you had Godasan to cook you, you could have been reborn as much more incredible food. I looked at the clock. Very soon it'd be midnight. October 5th, the second day, would end. You can say an October 4th and yesterday seemed like a lie. That's how much nothing had happened after this that test thing. Nothing happened. No phone, no phone call came and no letters came. No person came and no one attacked me. Nothing happened at all. I was demanding a refund on all the time and energy that that tension stole from me. Because after that, for an entire day, a full 24 hours, nothing happened. So surely nothing's gonna happen now. A full 24 hours ago, Beatrice called me to the spot in front of the mansion's entrance. There I was given a strange test to determine the successor to, to the headship or whatever. I gave a serious answer in my own way, but somehow hadn't meshed with the other side. Beatrice got pissed for no reason and fell silent. I yelled her to try and say something, but she gave no answer. When I asked her where Maria was, she just told me to go to the chapel and left. To tell the truth, it was an anticlimax. No matter what kind of weird test you gave, or at least tell me whether I passed or failed. Are you trying to say thank you for coming, your results will be mailed to you later or something? Quit messing with me. Anyway, I then headed to the chapel. After failing their tests, both George Anaki and Jessica were killed. I couldn't let Maria get killed, too. Also, I might get a chance to catch some person trying to kill her. As a little kid, I often heard from Jessica that you get in trouble if you went near the chapel. So I'd never been there, but I at least knew where it was. I couldn't find any trace of a person there. But there was a key bundle lying in front of the door. That would be someone telling me to open the door, but after trying all the keys, I found that nothing, none of them fit. I was called Maria's name, but there was no answer whatsoever. I searched around the chapel, but there was a limit to what I could do in the pitch black with just a flashlight. I realized that the key bundle might be, might be a set of master keys, which could make it possible to open the door to the mansion. I found no sign of Maria, so I returned to the mansion. The mansion was wrapped in silence. And in a horrible stench. However, it's amazing how good humans are at adapting. The inside of the mansion must still be wrapped up in that smell. However, I grew completely used to it and stopped minding it. It didn't seem any worse than an old, any old house where someone had burnt some meat. At first I was bewildered by the stench, but decided to head to the dining hall for the time being. I found those corpses that were so pitiful. Go to some of the rest that hesitated to speak at them in detail. It was the remains of Anansahi and the others who had become the first victims. Half of each head had been completely split open. And it was so gruesome that even without knowing a thing about examining corpses, I could say that they were 100% dead. And on top of that, the remaining halves of their faces were left like normal. It was even easy to identify them. Really convenient corpses, they, these were. There's another six bodies, there's one more. The seventh corpse was Maria. The next to Aunt Rosa, as I was sleeping alongside her. I cried. At the deaths of an innocent young girl. Out of the cruel way my dad and the rest had died. I raced to the mansion swinging the hat-shaped spear. Our handstand spear yelling, Come out here, bastard! But I couldn't find any trace of anyone here. Thinking they might be playing to hide somewhere and attack me from behind, I, was, I went around searching for hiding places. Sometimes growing more cautious and sometimes intentionally letting my guard down in various ways. But in the end, not even a kitten appeared. Then, morning came. Attention and fatigue combined with my drowsiness making for the worst kind of dawn. Humans are pretty incredible. Even when a murderer might be hiding somewhere, I prioritize drowsiness and fatigue over our own lives. By that time, I was starting to feel a little pretty ridiculous. After all, for a, for a full six hours before dawn, 
I'd walk around the mansion yelling at the culprit to show themselves. My search had been a careful one, and I tired myself out and let my guard down. Even so, no one came to attack me. Basically, I lost patience with them and figured they could do whatever the hell they wanted. The boat won't come until the typhoon passes. It's in the TV that it won't pass until tomorrow, so I've got another full day today. Lazing about lost its interest. Even though I knew it would probably make the police mad, I decided to play detective for a bit. First thing was the dining hall where the very first murder had occurred. Six who had been killed in the beginning really were pitiful. The weapon was probably a gun. Maybe their heads were split up with something powerful like a magnum bullet or a shotgun. It was a reasonable theory to hold. Compared to that, the seventh corpse, Maria, had died in a much better and cleaner way. At a glance, I could see no external wounds, and I didn't understand how she'd been killed. By her mouth were traces of bubbles that she might have spat out. It looked like a typical death by poisoning that you might see in a TV drama. Was Maria called out to the chapel and given a test? So why was she in the corpse-filled dining hall laying next to her mother, dead? Even if the cause of death was poison, who gave it to her? Her clothes weren't disturbed at all. I had to imagine that she was forcibly pushed down and given an injection of poison. Tell that it's better to assume that she was given a capsule of poison or something and made to swallow it. But compared to the scattered and violently mutilated corpses in the room, Maria's corpse was too clean. If they had a gun, they only needed to pull the trigger. The poisoning, whether by having her drink it or by an injection, it took a lot more effort. Considering the culprit's brutal nature, you'd think that Maria's death alone would, have, would be given special treatment. Why was only Maria given a sleep like death? True, being killed is always a pitiful thing. But for some reason, Maria's death alone seemed very courteous to me. Both Maria's hands were joined on her chest, as though the dead person had put the, as though the dead person had put them there herself. Did Maria do that herself before dying? Isn't this usually something done by someone else after the the person dies? As though sleeping with her mother, whose head had been hat was half crushed, Maria dozed in peace. For some reason, that contrast really bugged me. Including the direct cause, it's probably safe to say that Maria's death is shrouded in mystery. And more than anything else, the biggest mystery in this dining hall was the pitfalls. The pitfalls that both Uncle Krause's group and Godasan had mentioned. After the first six were killed, five more fell through pitfalls and were captured. What are pitfalls? Things that suddenly open and you fall through them, right? The room had a solid floor with a carpet that looked dignified, if a bit worn out. No matter how you looked at it, it was a single piece. If pitfalls had opened up, there would have been a, there would have had to have been a seam just in that place. If there had been some trick like a pitfall, wouldn't it creak when you walked on it? No matter how much I walked around, feeling the carpet, I just couldn't imagine that a pitfall was hidden there. Anyway, it'd be one thing if a single person fell, but a full five people did. Putting together everyone's stories, each one of them had fallen from a different location. At the very least, there had to be five separate places with pitfalls. So, what does that mean? Was that room actually made with pitfalls across the entire floor? So, by pushing a button, you can open up a pitfall in the location of your choice. Some kind of contraption like that? That kind of ridiculous mechanism would be surprising even in a ninja mansion. But if Dad and the rest heard about this, I wonder if they'd say I wouldn't put it past Grandfather to do it. To make it. At any rate, I didn't learn anything more about more from the dining hall. Do the pitfalls not exist? Or do they exist, but I just can't find them, amateur that I am? I can't say for sure. The claim that the pitfalls were there. I can't ignore them, even if I can't find them. The next ones to be killed were Jessica and George Anarchy. I discovered George Anarchy when I was, when I'd been called out for my test. He had been called out to the out to the arbor in the rose garden, and probably shot in the forehead with a gun. Jessica had been called to her own room on the second floor of the mansion. The door to the the, the, the door to her room was locked. That wasn't a problem at all inside the master key. Inside the room, it was horrible. 
After the dining hall, I was used to corpses, so I built up, I built up a bit of an immunity. The phone receiver was loose and dangling. Had she been killed while stalling the phone with me? Jessica was leaning against the wall right next to it, with half of her head split open. As far as I could tell by glancing at the scene, it looked like she had been killed with the wall on the phone. In that case, had the culprit been right there before her eyes? I hadn't gotten the impression when listening to Jessica's voice over the phone. I'm pretty sure Jessica said that they got me. Well, best to assume that she'd already received a fatal wound at the time of the phone call. That's right. And she also said this. When you come, Battler, I'll be a corpse with half of its head split open. Yeah. That's what she said. From what I could tell by looking at Jessica's corpse, there was no wounds on her other than the damage to her head. Did she have had an injury serious enough to make her prepared for death, and then died halfway through the phone call? But the way she talked on the phone made me think that she'd escaped harm for the time being. You'd be able to have a casual conversation over a phone if a culprit were before your eyes. Did the culprit come in partway through the phone call and kill Jessica? No, that can't be right. After all, this room was locked. Wait, that doesn't tell me anything. If the culprit stole a master key from one of the victims, locking the door would be meaningless. But she had no external wounds other than her head. In that case, should I assume that the fatal wound that she prepared to die from and the actual external wound that, that damaged her head were two different things? And that both of them were made for the, to the same part of the body? In other words... Jessica was struck severely to the head and received an incredibly bad wound. Then she called me and neither lost consciousness or died when on the floor on the phone. And the culprit came in and damaged her head again. Something like that. After being called to this room, Jessica was attacked by the culprit and received a serious injury. Then, the culprit she thought she... Then the culprit, uh, thought she'd been uh, <laughs> then the culprit thought that she'd been killed and went away for the time being. But Jessica miraculously started breathing again and called me with what would become her dying message. The culprit realized they'd failed to kill her and rushed back to deliver the final blow after Jessica fell unconscious from massive blood loss. That seems to add up, more or less. Except for how Jessica was able to accurately predict the nature of that final blow. And there was one more thing that bugged me about the phone call from Jessica. Jessica had said this. George Nissan's done for too. That was an instant death. She said it almost as though she witnessed George Anarchy being killed. But, while well, you certainly could see the Rose Garden from the window in Jessica's room. Even to the roof of the arbor where George Anarchy had been summoned, it was very far away. And on the fact that there was this is the night of the typhoon, it's very hard to imagine that she was able to witness everything that happened by the arbor from this window. And more than anything else, Jessica left before George Anarchy. So shouldn't have been able, shouldn't, she shouldn't have known that George Anarchy's test took place by the arbor. Why did Jessica know that George Anarchy had been killed? Also, during the search of, my, of the entire mansion, I found Kyrie-san's corpse as well. It was in one of the old guest rooms at the back of the first floor. In the past, before the construction of the guest house, relatives had spent the, the night in these. Kyrie-san's situation matched Jessica's perfectly. She'd probably been killed during her phone call with me. The receiver was hanging in tidily, and Kyrie-san lay crumpled in that corner. But the way she had been killed was very different from Jessica. Her head wasn't smashed. Instead, a stake with a cult and an occult design was buried into her forehead. It was so gruesome, so I pulled it out. After pulling it, I this might get me in trouble with the police later. So a little too late, I sat down by Kyrie-san's side. 
its tip was sharp and stained with enough blood that it might have penetrated fully to the brain. I didn't know what kind of metal it was made of, but it was about as heavy as a paperweight. Certainly, if you were stabbed all out with something like this, it might cause a terrible wound. I probably knew what, th what that stake meant. It's one of those. The style of killing from the fourth twilight onward in the witch's epitaph. It's probably that gouge with a stake and kill thing. However, a human skull is very firm. No matter how much someone murder must muster their strength, could it really have been pierced that so neatly? No. My reasoning... By my reasoning, the stake wasn't the, was the cause of death. It's just been used to damage the corpse after death. She's probably killed with a gun or something like, or something, like George Anarchy. And the stake had been stuck into the hole left by the gun. Thinking of it that way makes it easy to accept. But, was Kyrie-san really killed with a gun? As she said on the phone, even though she was holed up inside a locked room, Kyrie-san was being attacked. In fact, this room had been locked. Also, she mentioned a golden thread or something flying in and attacking her. In fact, there were four pl places around Kyrie-san's corpse were holes that could have been caused by some kind of attack. But still, a golden thread attacked her through the keyhole? I looked at the door from curious Aunt's perspective. If it had been one of those old keyholes you see in an old mystery movie, where you can peek through the other side, it would clearly been possible to stick something through it. Beyond the doors in the mansion were old fashion, fashioned. The locks were the familiar, average cylinder style that you could see if, that you could find in any, of the, any normal house. In other words, they weren't constructed in a way that would let you penetrate through them. So, no matter how thin an object you might try to stick through the keyhole, it's unthinkable that something something penetrated through this from the from the outside and attacked. A cylinder lock, and a keyhole. But despite that, Kyrie-san definitely said some, said that something like a golden thread had flown in through the keyhole. It spun around while aiming for her and attacked her. A golden thread attacking through a keyhole. I couldn't understand what it meant at all. But even so. Kyrie-san probably predicted that I wouldn't be able to under understand all this. And it wasn't just Kyrie-san. I was it over the phone, too. No. It's the very beginning. The time we talked to Goda-san and Kumasawa-san, got the phone call from Uncle Krauss's group. Everyone has, the sa has said the same, consistent thing. Grandfather summoned witches and demons, and it's, it's killing people with magic. They'd been shown that right in front of them, right before their eyes. These weren't tricks or fate. Fakes. There was no chance, but to be there was no choice but to believe it. With one voice, they had said all that. They had all said that. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and the mystery woman, calling herself Beatrice, appeared. Even I had pretty much believed that she was a real witch and might start summoning goat monsters right and left. However, after being al left alone for a whole day, my feelings of tension had faded completely. I was able to think that something so stupid definitely couldn't be true. They lose their heads in a, li a little in an extraordinary situation where their, where their lives were exposed to danger? And mistakenly think that a witch was attacking them with magic? Multiple people gave them the same kind of, testi gave the same kind of testimony. And on top of that, none of their opinions conflicted with each other. It had just been, if it had just been a single statement, I'd be able to accept, suspect that they just didn't see what they thought they saw. But doing that now is pretty... difficult. And next to the back door, I found Uncle Krauss with his head half smashed. Even though he escaped the dungeon of Kuadorian, he made it this far by a secret underground passage, he had been killed. Buried into the gruesome cross section of his half-crushed head. It was a stake with an occult design. The one that had been buried in Akiriasan's forehead. In this situation, it was very hard to imagine the stake was the weapon he used. He had been killed with a powerful gun like the six in the dining hall. After death, he had been jabbed with a stake like Kiriasan. I wonder if the golden threads that Kiriasan spoke of attacked Uncle Krauss, too. Does there exist some kind of tool like an endoscope that's very thin but can be moved across a wall? Moved about a wall? At will? Eh. And that can also attack people? No way. Never heard of anything like that.
But even so, if this fact had been revealed to one of the relatives, maybe they'd say I wouldn't put it past Grandfather to make it. So I can't deny that the existence of Golden Thread X that can be moved at will and attack people. I can either accept that this mysterious weapon exists, or else... I'll have to accept that this was a murder committed with magic. To find the next corpse, I had to go out through the back door and search around a bit, outside a bit. Behind the mansion in the wild growth bushes, wild grown bushes that were almost swallowed up by the forest, it's not like an old well. And right next to it were Dr. Nanjo and Shannon Chan's corpses. Both corpses had their heads smashed. The other weren't suck, uh, su stuck in. There were stakes all lying right next to each, damaged he each of their damaged heads. Each corpse was atrocious. And then to look directly at Shannon Chan's lovely face, which had been half blown away, was very painful. Then there was the well. I heard that inside it was a secret underground passage to the mysterious mansion, Kuadorian. At this time, I began to think that Beatrice and her accomp accomplices might have used the underground passage and left for Kuadorian. Even though there had, been, there had apparently been at least ten of them, I hadn't seen a trace of anyone. It seemed very likely that they'd already escaped to a different location. There's the typhoon. They can't go out to sea. It goes the same for the forest. There's no way they could traverse such a deep, uncultivated forest on foot. In that case, they had to go. They only had one place to go. The mysterious hidden mansion, Kuadorian. The secret underground passage at the bottom of the well. By this time, I'd entirely lost my fear of being killed if it happened to come across. If I'd happened to come across the enemy. Don't fuck with me. This time I'll storm into your mansion. That what the hell? Damn it! The old well had a firm cover on it. The cover was an iron grill. The gaps between the bar were perhaps twenty centimeters across. You could peer inside, but it wasn't really something that, that a human could pass through. If I had known better, I wouldn't have thought if any it had anything more than a simple cover to prevent falls. But from what Curious on it told me. I knew that its purpose was to prevent intruders from entering the secret underground passage in its depths. The cover was extremely firm and rigid. No matter how much I pushed or pulled, I couldn't even get close to opening it. I couldn't find any obvious lock. It might have been sealed by some mechanism. But no matter how much I investigated it, I couldn't find anything to release it. The biggest piece of information that Curious on had given me, had tried to give me, gambling her final moments, there's the underground passage in this well. Don't think I'll be stopped by something like this cover. I'll smash it to bits. I'll search for a tool. I had an idea. After all, I'd seen the various tools in the gardening shed when we locked Godasan and Kumasawasan in there. But the shutter to the gardening shed was locked. On top of that, the key was with Godasan, who was dead on the inside. In other words, the gardening shed was a closed room. There's no way to open it from the outside. In that case, I've got to break the shutter. There has to be a tool for that somewhere. Kind of feels like I'm going in circles here. Then, while searching for that, the one the source of the stench had been had permeated the whole mansion this whole time it was the underground boiler room. The boiler room was, was dimly lit, humid, smelled horrible, top of all that was incredibly creepy. But there were several large tools there. I managed to find a fire hatchet and some massive wire cutters. And Grandfather's corpse. No, strictly speaking, I really said that I found a burnt corpse of a person who was probably Grandfather. Someone, someone's corpse had been stuffed into the blazing fires of the boiler. However, by coincidence, I was able to notice the number of to toes on the corpse. Both feet had six toes. That's right. I think I heard from Dad some time ago. Think about Grandfather having polydactyly with extra toes. Of course, the, uh, the oldest Shirmia family tradition. Either those with extra fingers or toes had some kind of good fortune and was treated with it as a good omen. 
because of that, grandfather was excited to selected to be the head of the successor or something. <laughs> but if I can be certain of this is grandfather's body just from the number of toes. After all, grandfather was supposed to be the leader of the, of the group of culprits. I didn't have a clue why he'd get stuffed into a boiler in a place like this and die. Mysterious corpse. Burning and spitting out a terrible stench amid the flames. If it really was grandfather. And the leader of the group of the culprits wasn't grandfather. But that Beatrice after all. Grandfather's use was used because he was convenient and was then thrown away. Unfortunately, it didn't look like I'd be, given a, I'd be given a chance to hear Grandfather's side of the story. Now that I'd obtained a tool, I thought about rushing to take on the cover to the well. I decided to break the shutter to the gardening shed first. I had plenty of time to kill anyway. I figured I'd check on the condition of Goto-san and Kumasawa-san's corpses. I hit the shutter with the hatchet, breaking into it. Took the wire cutter into the crack, and scissored it around, opening up a hole. Then I faced Godasan and Kumasawa-san's corpses once more. As a result, I learned a new fact. First, they had not died by being hung on the neck by the neck. Both of their feet were solidly on the floor. Both of their foreheads were, so were, were signs they had been shot with a gun. The loop seemed longer than a normal noose. On top of the length was different on each of the on each to match the height of each person. In other words, the lengths had been adjusted so that both Godasan, who was tall, and Kumasawa-san, who was short, had the feet solidly but barely on the ground. While the ropes carried both their weights and their heads lolled, both of them had some slack below their knees. If they'd, be, if they'd stood up with the loops around these their necks, there would have been some extra length. In other words, the loops wouldn't have been there, for, been that great for hanging people. The direct cause of death was probably a shot to the head. It was gruesome. Their insides were still dripping out from those gaping holes, staining their faces a deep red. It's probably best to assume that they were, they were that they were then hung, pulled up, and left exposed like that. If they had been shot with a gun, they probably would have been lying down on the floor. If that had been the case, he wouldn't have been able to tell they were dead even if he peeked through the window. The mountain of stuff would have gotten in the way. If they'd been lying down, they would have been hidden. Make the deaths of these two known to the rest of us who couldn't go inside, it would have hang at them like this, making it visible from the outside. Was this done to get back at us for thinking that those two would surely be safe if we left the key with them? I wonder where the shutter key, the shutter key we gave Godas on, which, which should have ensured their safety, is now. That key was in the pocket of his trousers. The gardening shed key had been kindly left there. Even the plate was attached. In other words, the gardening shed had been a closed room after all. And that gave rise to another question. Because this can't be explained by a hanging. If they didn't commit suicide, then those nooses were set up by the culprit. It might have been possible to shoot them through the window, but it's really unthinkable that someone could have tied two loops to the beam from the outside. And furthermore, there's no way they could have lifted up the heavy corpses. In other words, to do all this, they would have had to have gone outside. Inside. But the key was, on, was in Godasan's pocket, and the shutter had been locked. In other words, the gardening shed had been a closed room. Godasan had said that there was only one key to the shutter. It was possible there was, that there was a copy. That the culprit was in possession of it. If we're, if we're allowed to theorize that there was actually a duplicate of the gardening storehouse key, and that Godasan just didn't know about it, this isn't even close to a closed room. But why is that? Despite the fact that, that, that almost all of the other corpses were shot to death and left almost completely alone, just these two corpses were intentionally hoisted up. I couldn't help but feel something a bit odd about that. After this, if we assume that the mystery corpse in the boiler room was grandfather's, the deaths of 18 people had been 16 people had been confirmed. There were 18 people on this island. I'm here, and there are 16 corpses. Cannon's Coon, Cannon Coon corpse, Cannon Coon's corpse is the only one I haven't been able to confirm. Oh. 
According to Kiryasan, he'd been killed while climbing out of the well and fallen down into it. So if the well closed up like this, it's impossible to check. Try shining a flashlight through the bars, down into the, the darkness and the depths of the well. The jet black darkness had no intention of showing me its depths with the light of that level. It looked like I'd have to break the bars after all. Using the hatchet and things I dragged from the boiler room and the gardening shed, I tried breaking the cover of the well. But the metal bars were extraordinarily sturdy, and breaking them would wasn't easy. I had them with the hatchet over and over, until my hands started feeling weird and, ev and eventually gave up on breaking them. It's impossible. If they were at least wood, you might be able to break them. But this metal... That's right. There's no way you can slice through metal bars like butter with a, hu with a human strength. Can't even begin to understand the story about how Cannon Coon cut through metal bars. I heard that a light like a red laser beam grew out of his arm. And then it's, he sliced through the metal bars like he was cutting through butter. Cutting through metal bars like butter? What's with the red laser beam? I mean, he secretly had a burner on him or something? And he had to burn through the bars? Still, just what kind of laser could cut through the metal bars like butter? It was like the kind of laser beam you'd find in, if the, in those robot anime I loved as a kid, doesn't it? Like that actually exist? How did Cannon can get a laser beam? No matter how much I wanted to ask him, he'd already been killed. Plus, even his corpse is now in the depths of that well beyond this cover. If Kaneku could slice through the metal bars, I'm sure he could handle the metal cover in a single swing. It just feels like the closed room go to sign was locked and while holding the key. Only one person can open the door, but they're locked inside. If only I had that power of Kaneku's. I'd do something about this cover myself. Just who is Kaneku's? He couldn't really be a non-human being capable of using a strange power, right? Kiryasan told me he believed to believe in witches. I've met an insane woman calling herself one. Could Canon Kun possibly be a human on the witch's side? Or else, the culprit? What the heck? Am I going to start treating him like the culprit just because I can't find his corpse? This is Beatrice. Oh, treating him like the culprit because there's no corpse. <laughs> and who was the one babbling about the suspicious being innocent? Very well, I couldn't bear having you push all the crimes on Cat and building a human culprit theory that way. I will guarantee it with the red. Cannon is dead. Among the five in Curie's group, he was the first to die. In short, he was the ninth victim. As there's no corpse, I can't say for sure. The Cannon is dead. So, my whispering and red does not reach the peace, you. <sighs> but it did reach you, right? At a glance, this was a mass murder due to something strange that could only be thought of as magic. Golden threads that attacked through keyholes. No. We even have testimony that something gold flew around the dining hall when the first six died. The two might have been the same weapon. Then there was the closed room murder of the garden shed and the laser beam that could cut metal bars. And that wasn't all. It was much, much more like, a gr like the group of goat monsters. The story of a witch who could have created pitfalls just by snapping her fingers. The rabbit like demons who had fired golden threads. I think there was more, but each part was all screwed up. Couldn't possibly accept it. I suspect that there was some kind of trick or mistake. But why in the world had everyone spoken with one voice, saying the same thing without contradiction in their testimony? It's not only the magic. It was Maria's mysterious death. 
Well, I just knew that George and Anaki had been killed. The mysterious burnt corpse that I couldn't confirm really belonged to that damn geezer. And more and more. All stuff I don't get. I the wine bottle up engulfed. I don't have a clue what's going on. At the dinner last night, the kids were chased out and told to go back to the guest house. There was a massacre in the dining hall. Kyrgyzstan and the rest were dropped through pitfalls and captured. And Jessica and George Anaki were called out to take a test or whatever and killed. Even though Kyrgyzstan's group was able to escape the dungeon somehow, all of them got killed in the end. At the very, very end, even Maria was killed, leaving me alone. And sure, I did nothing except stay locked up in the guest house. During the time a huge incident occurred and ended. What can I call it except incomprehensible? I don't have a clue anymore! Now I'm nothing but a drunk. You plan on leaving only me alive? Show yourself right away and come kill me already. Too much of a pain, so I won't search for you. You show me your true form yourself! I won't run or hide. It's coming with arrows or bullets or whatever. I haven't gotten any sleep since yesterday, so I'm incredibly sleepy. You want to kill me? Go ahead. I decided to return to the guest house and boldly rest in a bed. When I exited the kitchen and passed through the lobby, that portrait of the witch came into view. The big clock did, too. It was almost exactly midnight. The sound of the bell rang out, proclaiming that midnight had arrived. As I listened, I looked up at Beatrice's portrait. Exactly 12 hour, 24 hours ago, I met you. What were you trying to say? And where did you go? Just who in the world are you? Golden Witch. Beatrice. I haven't solved a single one of the riddles surrounding you. Show yourself! And fight me! Then, the witch showed herself. A guest of honor finally appearing, she showed herself on the landing at the top of the big staircase. So, you finally show yourself. I've been kept bored for a whole day. Correct. I gave you a whole day. Was that enough for you to fully exercise the rights of the human side? Yeah. I was bored, after all. I did a heck of a lot of stuff. I did a heck of a lot of it. Angie was a good piece. Don't you... Don't you speak Angie's name. She appeared through a miracle, sacrificed herself, and gave you the tenacity required for certain victory. Don't you speak Angie's name. That brutal death was something you needed. If you hadn't seen that death, you wouldn't have grown serious. Without the wicked call of Angie's ill-fated future, your tenacity for victory would not have been born. I told you not to speak Angie's name! In short, she was a necessary sacrifice. Otherwise, an anger great enough to kill me would not have been born in you. John? The rivalry between us cannot be destroyed. Damn you, Lady Bird Castell. It's more fitting to call that a trump card than a piece. No matter how much a piece acts, it does not stray from the board. But no matter how much a trump card wields... But no matter how much power a trump card wields, it is always thrown away after it is used. Angie was a truly good trump card for you. Don't you <laughs> speak Angie's name! <laughs> At Battler's angry war, Beato finally stopped talking. You know, I don't have time to play around in a place like this anymore. Even a tie will keep, will keep Angie waiting. I am going to break through you. Take my family and go back home. 
And what's the second playing witch games with you? In that case, what should you do? You know, don't you? Yeah. I'll beat you down. I'll blast away all witches, magic and illu illusions and delusions. Come on, let's get started. I won't let you trick me again. Resume the game, okay? I'll tear about the witch's veil concealing the outright lie you are. You talk too much. All you have to do is honestly say, I'll kill you. Yeah. Those are the words you want. I'll say them. This is the first and last wish of yours that I'll lend an ear to. I thank you. I will. <laughs> I will kill you. Very well. Let us begin, battler. Yes, the time for the witch hunt has come. Hey, really quick, um, Khan, I think your microphone defaulted to your laptop's mic because it's it doesn't sound as good. <laughs> I think she might actually just be a bit far from her mic, actually. Try for us moving closer. I'm terribly sorry about this, but I just want to make sure that the quality is really good for the next part. Because that's it's really important. <laughs> Uh, talk again really quickly. Is this better? Yes, that's much better. All right, so okay. there you go. Perfect. The time for the witch hunt has come. Try and chase me. Try and corner me. Try and kill me. I expect a lot from you. Try and show me what your little sister gave you in her last moments. Bring it on! Battler's cry burned the world with white light. And if you open your eyes amidst the darkness, the two of them can be seen in a rose garden. Who shall make the first move? Me. How bold. In the rose garden, beautiful rose petals danced. The color of those rose petals was red. The fact that they, fa they faced each other in this beautiful rose garden, prove or make claim to a red single truth? That must be why the roses are red. But in the language of flowers, roses represent passion, not truth. The flower for truth is a forget-me-not. And that flower is blue. I'll bore through everything with my blue truth. From the very beginning of everything. I'll start from the very first game. Very well. Let's see what you've got. Come. Here I go. I've already proclaimed it, but I'll say it again. It isn't just for the murder of Dr. Nanjo in the last game. This will, tear apart, this will tear apart every scene from every game since the beginning. Ushirmi Akinzo is already dead. Therefore, the true number of people on the island is 17. By adding an unknown person X to that, it becomes 18 people. By supposing that the person X exists, the crime is possible even if all 17 people have alibis. By this, even though the number of people reaches 18, it is still possible for Culprit X to exist and carry out the crime, even if all 18 people seem to have alibis. You can break through all the murders in Episode 1 by supposing an unknown person X exists. Furthermore, it's even possible to explain the mystery of Kinzo's evaporation from the closed room sealed by the receipt, by making a bold assumption that Kinzo wasn't there in the first place. Unless Beato counters this as the red truth. 
The illusion of the witch from episode one has been completely smashed. The blue, this blue truth is valid. The wedge of blue truth of Balor and Throne stabbed right into the top of Beato's left foot. Was the red bold blood pouring out from there a protest being made by her red truth? Beato shut one of her eyes tight, and during the unbearable pain of this blue truth that denied her. <laughs> Not bad. But I mustn't be denied yet. I mustn't be killed yet. This is not yet enough. In the subs of Wind Games, there were mysteries that couldn't be explained without a loan. Right? Which mysteries? In the final stages of the second game. George took Goda and Shannon with him, barricaded them in Natsuhi's room and was killed. The key that unlocked Natsuhi's room was locked up inside the room, and all the remaining keys that could unlock that door were in Rosa's hand. Even if the culprit X existed, it should have been impossible to construct that closed room. The blue edge that pierced Beato shook. She was resisting, fighting to pull it out. No, that doesn't shake my blue truth. If culprit X were to obtain a master key, that's not even close to a closed room. No, it was impossible for the culprit to obtain one. All of the master keys were under Rosa's control. But that's meaningless if Anrosa was an accomplice of the culprit. Anrosa handed a key over to culprit X by some method, assisting in the lock room murder. And after that, she retrieved a key by a similar method. Too naive, Beato. I already guessed that much at that much at this time. At that, at that time, yeah. Yes, you did, didn't you? <laughs> Sorry. The wedge that had been gradually losing its sparkle had seemed as though it was about to be pulled out. Regained its strong blue again, thanks to Battler's additional blue truth, and dug into Beato again, eating into her foot. Be let out a cry of anguish of the pain. <sighs> not yet. This is still nothing. Not yet. Not yet! On to the third game. The six linked closed rooms, the murders of Aunt Rosa and Maria, then the rest death in the dining hall, the murders of Uncle Krauss and Aunt Natsuhi. All of that can be explained if we suppose that Aunt Eva was the culprit. This argument was already won back then. And even that final riddle you proposed through Eva, the murder of Dr. Nanjo can be explained with an 18 unknown person X. That breaks through the whole third game. Can you counter that? <sighs> Of course. This much is nothing to worry about. In that case, how do you explain George's disappearance from the guest house? I shall add to the red truth. George did not go down the stairs of the guest house. He flew out through the window. In the final stage of the third game, George suddenly vanished from the second floor of the guest house. Ava, who had been on the first floor, claimed that no one had come downstairs. Because of, that, because of the blue truth, George could have snuck down to the first floor and escaped while Ava was busy taking care of, busy carrying Kraus and not to his corpses outside. But by adding an additional red truth, Bieta had denied that possibility. To go outside without going down the staircase to the first floor, he would have had to leave by the window. But all the windows have been locked from the inside. So what? Just like you said. He flew out the window, right? There was a lawn. So we couldn't tell if he jumped down and it was raining so hard. Any light traces would have disappeared. Niall used the red truth again. All windows and doors leading to the outside were locked from the inside. 
Furthermore, it is impossible to lock any of those from the outside. The Lord had no technique by which to lock them. I'll use more of the blue. I said it myself at the time. In that case, everything works out as long as someone locked the window after George Anarchy escaped through it. Nothing difficult about that. <laughs> Can I not escape after something like this? Mieto could remove the blue wedge that was buried into her foot. The fake witch was burned more and more by that forceful blue. Nothing that shakes my blue truth in any of the first three games. In that case, the only game that can prove you're a witch is this game. The fourth game. Since I have encountered you with the red, that is so. I shall have to prove which is using only this game. Very well. Give me everything you've got. There's nothing strange about the murder of the six people in the dining hall. The 18th person X went wild with a gun and killed everyone. Regarding the pitfalls, there is every chance that the pitfalls truly were hidden there. It's also possible to explain them with Curious Science Theory hypothesizing the existence of a poison dart shooting device X, which can knock a person out instantly. The murders of George Anarchy, Jessica, and those who escaped from the dungeon can also be explained with guns, just like the dining hall. Nothing strange about it. But I'm sure you've got a counterattack, right? Bring it on! Your greatest sword, this 18th person X, based on the theory that Kinzo was already dead. I knew you would make that claim. That's why I took Kinzo out of his study. All members of the family conference welcomed that Kinzo, right? All of those present at the family conference acknowledged the existence of Kinzo. That's right. But Grandfather was seriously ill, bedridden on the verge of life and death, right? If he was so worn out that he looked like a different person, maybe no one would, would have cared, right? I'll counter with this. That Grandfather was a different person, a body double. A different person who the relatives mistook for Grandfather. Then I'll counter with this. No person would mistake Oshirami or Kinzo by sight. No matter what the disguise, they would not mistake Oshirami or Kinzo by sight. Then how about this? By declaring with the Red Truth in the second game that the number of Master Keys was five, when in the first game the number was more than five, you change the premise of the later games. In the same way that it's possible for Kenzo's life or death status was changed for the fourth game. Therefore, Kenzo's existence in the fourth game does not serve as proof that he was existed in the previous games. Therefore, even if he supposed that the six murders in the dining hall were carried out by Grandfather himself, it doesn't create any contradictions. Then let me counter this way. Kinzo's life or death status is the same as the start of each of the four games. The status was not different for the fourth game alone. Repeat it! Kinzo's alive at the start of every game! I refuse to repeat it. I won't answer, Battler. I won't give you the red truth you so desire. Damn. You're standing in my way, geezer! Are you putting yourself on the line to protect Beatrice? This most beloved witch of yours? Swaying that... swaying that damn geezer came into view. Heh. <laughs> Is he trying to be some kind of knight? Blocking the path between me and Beato? <laughs> Battler! Are you capable of surpassing me?! I won't let you reach! I will not let you reach! Not the Golden Witch's- not to the Golden Witch's height! You see? <laughs> Your thoughtless reasoning cannot surpass even me alone! Die! K 
Kinzo's jet black cape spread out as though to swallow the world. Becoming the snout of a vast black dragon that came at me, trying to swallow me in one f one gulp. It's the black dragon's roar. I calm my breathing and close my eyes lightly. I'll swallow you up in a single gulp! Disappear, inexperienced fool! Quiet, you damn undying ghost. Oh, so you call me a ghost? You're gonna see it through the end. This theory that I am already dead. That will prove fatal for you. Be swallowed up by the first twilight of the fourth game and disappear! The black dragon's vast mouth, it snapped its fangs, swallowed Battler whole. At that instant, Battler suddenly opened his eyes. Thanks, Beatrice. Your third game became a foothold for my counterattack. What? See ya, damn geezer. This is goodbye. As a basis for claiming that Kinza was dead, even in the fourth game, I propose the, f I propose the following theory. Very well. Come with all you have, my descendant. Here I go, you damn geezer! My theory is that Kinza's name is passed on as the title of the Ashuramiya family head. Ashuramiya Kinza was already dead, and he passed his name on to someone else. Everyone acknowledged it. And therefore, all of those present at the family conference acknowledge the existence of Kinzo. There wasn't even any need for the person to disguise himself as grandfather, because everyone recognized the new Kinzo. Therefore, they didn't actually mistake Kinzo by sight. As long as, they pre as, long as the preceding theory is not disproven, nothing can change the fact that you're dead. This is the final blow. Damn geezer. I demand that you repeat it. Among all the people there, not one had multiple different names. I cannot. Rest in peace, damn geezer. Thank me. You were finally able to die. This is your requiem. Take it and drop dead. Yashirmi Akinzo was already dead. Yeah, poor old you. Whenever we find your corpse, it's always completely burnt. That was a gimmick to prevent the discovery of the fact, the, the fact that the time had passed since your death. And you passed your name on to someone else. With this theory, even though you are dead, Kinzo can still appear at the family conference. How's that? This is checkmate! Several dozen blue stakes bored into Kinzo's ghost. Their terrible destructive power wouldn't let the ghost recover again. Beatrice. Kinzo. Thank you for everything. Rest in peace. I will not forget my time spent with you. This person along with the shadow of the black dragon as golden flower petals scattered. The Shremia Kinza became a gold-colored cyclone and disappeared. Even after death, he had fought for the sake of the woman he'd loved. There's no doubting that your love and madness were the real thing. <laughs> Butler. Don't hate me. Let the dead sleep. Don't wake them. You're up next. This is the end for you, too. Edith still couldn't pull out the blue wedge that pierced her foot. She realized that, this, that she was on the verge of death. I've gone along with you a whole bunch. I think I've more than fulfilled any responsibility I had to play with you. It's about time to finish things up. I've got a lonely little sister waiting at home. Let me take my leave with my whole family. Then kill me. In that case, try and kill me! I won't run or hide, and by now, I won't even be able to avoid it. 
Come on! Ushiro Mia Vatora! You've got it! With the 18th person X from the dead Kinzo theory, everything remaining is pierced through. George Anarchy and Jessica's death in the fourth game can also be explained by Culprit X. And the five who escaped from the dungeon were, and were killed, and the two at the gardening shed, and Maria in the end. All those can be explained with an 18th person X. There's nothing strange at all! This concludes an, expl an explanation of the culprits, with humans, for all games. Beatrice, this here is Checkmate! <laughs> Beatrice, who couldn't dodge, had several blue stakes driven into her into her and was skewered. Beato grabbed at them, trying to pull them out somehow. Uh, that got me. It hurts. This will kill me, won't it? Uh, if I don't pull this out, I'll die. I've had enough of the pain. I've had enough of anguish. With both hands, Vieto firmly grabbed one of the blue grasp one of the blue stakes. Naturally, with the power the power of the witch denying and blue truth burned her hands. Unable to even hide her tears of the pain, Beato howled and tried to pull the stakes out with all of her might. If I can't pull these out, I'll die. This is... This is my final counterattack. Then, Battler, how do you explain my several acts of magic? The very first time those appeared was in the second game when I fixed Maria's pumpkin marshmallow. At that time, Rosa definitely witnessed that magic. Certainly at the time, Rosa witnessed gold butterflies gathering and the fixing of a marshmallow by the miracle of magic. <laughs> Rosa alone witnessing it isn't very credible, right? That's why I increased the number of witnesses to the uppermost limit later on. <laughs> Which is what happened in this last game. The summoning of my minions. And brutal murders due to magic. All of those were witnessed by a great many people. That is itself proof that my magic exists. How do you explain that? Stalemate. What? Magic exists because magic exists. In the rules of our brawn tube trial, say that you couldn't use that kind of argument. Yes, you're right. <laughs> no matter who, or how many people, witnessed magic, that cannot become proof of magic's existence. Whether all the magic you've shown exists or not, I could ignore it all and explain things with humans. That's my undeniable right. Am I wrong? With those words, the blue stakes let an even brighter light. Oh, that's actually you, shit. <laughs> With those words, the blue stakes let an even brighter light, knocking my hands away. As I feared, pull them out after all. <laughs> As Battler is now, even if I pull up a witness for each individual bit of magic and demand an explanation, 
He'll probably use some kind of move to deny all of them. Not just the magic with the marshmallow I showed Rosa, but all the miracles of magic. So, I can no longer even claim to be a witch without questioning him about something like how a marshmallow was fixed. I'm in such an inferior position that I must fight over such trivialities. It may be impossible for me. I know that. This was to be a game without victory from the very beginning. So it was only natural that the day of my defeat would eventually come. Have I fought Batman up until today just to lose to Batler? Just know we're having technical difficulties. I will not know until you unmute yourself, Khan. Is this better? Yes. I began the game thinking I might be able to win. Even if I wouldn't be able to win easily. I believed that in a game repeating endlessly, a miracle would eventually occur. After all, I had certain willpower on my side, an unwavering desire to win with certainty. However, I've now lost that miracle completely. And that certain willpower resides in Battler, leaving me certainly without even a one in a million chance at a miracle. No, perhaps I should say with no miracles or certainty. I will have no victory, and no end through a tie. The only resolution permitted is, is to continue on resisting until defeat is given to me in this game. That's right. I am fighting only to be killed by Battler. I looked into Battler's eyes. That which was reflected inside them wasn't me. The figures of the little sister waiting for his return and the family he had to bring back were reflected in those eyes. To him, my existence is already not even that of an individual. Obviously. From the very beginning, he's been trying to deny the individual that I am. Yes, that last game. Sure was fun. I was only tricking him a bit. But for just a short period of time, it felt like we understood each other. And that was fun. That's right. I should have made my move then. I should have continued for eternity with Battler still totally fooled. But that's just no good, right? That just wouldn't be true, Victory. Is... is this checkmate? Beatrice? Beat had been run through with several blue stakes, skewed over and over to the ground while still standing. 
Because of that, she, wouldn't even, she wasn't even able to fall over. And still looking up to the sky, the sewn in place. That tragic form. Might have been a fitting end for the cruel witch who had endlessly toyed with 18 people's lives, and who had killed constantly for hundreds and thousands of years. Gently, as if someone was mourning over something, rain began to fall. Amid that rain, Beata was soaked and crucified. Is it over, Beato? There was... Not even a squeak. Not yet. You want a woman who will, end th who will let things end with just this. Don't be... Ridiculous. How can you look at this... And think that it isn't... Over. Quickly, deliver the final blow. Just say it. With your blue truth. Therefore, witches do not exist. Say it. Just say it. With that single blow. Just put a stop to my breathing. It's useless. Huh. So you would expose me to even further shame. Isn't it settled already? Stand up. Our brawl still isn't over. Not over, you say? That just now wasn't you losing. You just stopped and gave up. Isn't that enough? Wouldn't giving up mean your victory? You shouldn't. You should return to your little sister right away. Just throw me away. Right. Didn't I tell you? I won't run away. And... I won't let you run away. Just who are you? What in the world is it that you want? If you want to know, why don't you just try your favorite move? What does it matter? Just a delusion. An illusion. Isn't that enough? It's all useless. I won't let you run away. Mm. I'll break through you. How can I let you run away like this? Mm. I won't let you run back to the darkness of illusions while you're still all hazy like this. I'll break through you. Completely. So stand up. Don't act all frail like that. You're still hiding several moves. I can tell. Why? Well, you just let me escape. Dad, Mom, and Angie. All the cousins and all the relatives. And all the servants. You toyed with them so much and killed them. I definitely won't forget. Won't forgive that inhumanity. I can still feel Angie's arms on my shoulders. I won't forgive your inhumanity. So I won't let you get away with this. That was eyes. Now you, you go, you go. Fine. That was eyes burned with the flames of hatred. The time had long since passed during which pitiful behavior would have earned his compassion. After being tricked once, Butler will never sympathize with me again. Never mind the wolves and sheep puzzle. This is like the boy who cried wolf, isn't it? What am I supposed to do? What should I do? Is fighting endlessly, only to avoid admitting defeat. A fitting endless torture for the endless witch. Is endlessly harassing Batler to avoid giving him a victory. Also part of being the endless witch. 
It's so sad. Is this what the endless magic is? I've had enough of endlessly being toyed with my witches. I've had enough. I will have no victory and no tie. In that case, there's only one result that can release me. <laughs> Since the time I succumbed to the path of witches. Since the day I made that contract with demons. It was promised that I would meet my end through tragedy, was it not? What's wrong, Golden Witch Beatrice? If you're the ruler of Rokenjima, show me a majesty fitting for that, even at the very end! Lightning. The world was smashed with white. Fitting last moments for the ruler of Rokenjima. <laughs> Still pierced by the blue stakes, Beato faced the rainy sky and let out a cry of laughter. And she slowly raised her face and stared at Battler. when I was about to praise your good fight and hand over victory. You shall regret that pride. This isn't something for, that isn't something for you to hand over. I'm gonna take it from you. The same goes for you, right? You can never accept an easygoing victory where I just say, maybe witches existing isn't so bad. Isn't that the very reason you intentionally fell apart like that at the end of the last tick at the last game? That's right. Last game, you took pity on me just once, didn't you? So now I'll pay back that debt. Stand! My enemy. My golden witch. Beatrice! <laughs> fool. You fool! <laughs> <laughs> you simpleton! You think you'll get another chance? <laughs> Be it a yell, the blue stakes that had pierced her chest blew to bits and disappeared. However, the blue wedge that had pierced her foot in the very beginning did not vanish. Can't pull it out yet. You can't pull out the blue truth of an 18th person X. I will respond to one thing you told me to repeat. As you reasoned, Kinzo was already dead at the store time for all games. However, in that case, all I need to do is take one person out. Thus far, I've been declaring that no more than 18 humans exist on this island. I will lower that by one for Kinzo. No more than 17 humans exist on this island. That excludes any 18th person. In short, this 18th person X does not exist. This applies to all games. What do you know? Looks like you're still hiding some pretty crazy stuff up your sleeve after all. The island, which has no more than 17 humans on it, has been set up to appear as though there were 18. Taking one out of one off of it makes 17. And we finally reached the correct number. That's why the wedge I knocked into you has been removed. Let's just start the fight over. Back from square one! The 
blue wedge that had sewn Beato in place broke apart. There's no longer anything piercing her. The, the scars on her body disappeared completely. There stood just as Battler had hoped for, the figure of the majestic golden witch who ruled Rokenjima. Then come, Battler. Once more from the beginning. Try and break through everything with the blue truth. I too will no longer play, run, or hide. Um, um. One moment. I'm sorry. I will be right back. Interlude? Fuck, I was about to put up the goddamn waiting symbol. Shit. <laughs> Alright, uh, say the line then. If you are worthless, then I shall end this match right here, right now. With my grand victory, I'll make you regret your refusal to compromise for all eternity. Come, starting from the first game. Right! The first twilight of the first game! The next range of battle, the, the murder of the six relatives that were found in the gardening shed in the beginning. The crime is possible for any of those who didn't have an alibi. Valid. Continue. What about the next closed room murder with Avon Hideyoshi? Even the chain was set for that closed room. I shall add to the red troop. Both deaths were homicides. It is not the case that after the construction of the locked room, one of them committed suicide after murdering the other. Furthermore, the murder was carried out with both the victim and the perpetrator in the same room. No method exists for the perpetrator to commit murder from outside the room. It's that the culprit was a human without an alibi. In other words, the dead! Among the first six corpses, there were some made un unidentifiable because their faces were smashed. One possible, one possible theory is that one who is actually a fake corpse, and that some culprit X killed those two for pretending to be a victim and hiding away. Then, after the locked room murder was constructed, the culprit hid under the bed and waited for all of us to leave. Very well. Next! Cannon was killed in the boiler room, correct? I shall add to the truth. All of the survivors have alibis. Let us include the dead as well. In short, no kind of human or dead person on the island could have killed Cannon. If no one could kill him, then, it might have, then he might have been the one to kill. Meaning Cannon Coon might have killed himself. Repeat it! Cannon Coon did not commit suicide! Cannon did not commit suicide. One more. 
Repeat it. Kenan Kuhn's death was a homicide. I refuse to repeat it. By that refusal, it may be possible to view it as a homicide. We already proclaimed in red that no one could have killed him. In other words, it wasn't a homicide. This is the same as the linked closed rooms from the first, third game. Kanan Koo died for a reason that was neither suicide nor homicide. The circumstances, circumstances are unclear. He died from an accident. By the devil's proof, I refuse to explain what kind of blunder could have led to an accidental death where a stake was driven into his chest. Oh, now that you have borrowed the power of demons, you are without peer. It is valid. In that case, what about the murders after that in the parlor of Genji, Nanjo, and Kumasawa? Naturally, Maria, who was in the same room, did not kill them. And of course, their three deaths were homicides. We can explain it with one of the, with the with the one who carried out the murder being Culprit X. He used an unidentifiable corpse to disappear. In the first place, their three faces were all were also pulverized. It's completely possible that one of them is a body double's corpse. I guarantee the identities of all unidentified corpses. Therefore, there were no body double tricks. And I can explain with, this, with simultaneous murders. Each of the three had a gun, pointed another in a clockwise pattern, and they blew each other's faces off at the same time. After that, Maria collected those guns and hid them. How about that? What? What a ridiculous argument! How amusing. Then what about Natsuki in the end? I shall add to the red truth. Natsuki's death was a homicide. There are no corpses of unknown identity, and all the survivors have alibis. You can explain it with an indirect murder by Trap X. Something was done to add Natsuki's gun. You can explain it if if, it was, if that was a trap gun, built to send a bullet right into the void if anyone tried to hold it up and shoot it. The bullet buried in Natsuhi's forehead was not fired from Natsuhi's gun. There's a possibility that Natsuhi was lured out by the letter of unknown contents, and she was called out into the hall. And she was forced into standing at a specific location at a specified time and murdered by some trap X, which was the gun that had been installed there beforehand. Wonderful! These reckless arguments of yours are even starting to feel pleasurable now. Out of respect, I shall hand the first game over to you. Well done. <laughs> the instant Bia though acknowledged her defeat in the first game. The stakes of Blue Truth once again pierce their chest, letting out a terrible sound. <laughs> this is too hardly painful, and it's not over yet. Come, now for the second game. Bieto just barely pulled up the stakes that had pierced her chest. But even though there was no hole left behind, she still seemed to be bearing a deep wound that was letting out a massive amount of blood. And she was tormented by an equally fierce pain. But Beato grinned, grinding her teeth, and pushed for the next game to start. But I won't feel sympathy for her. Just by her existing there, we'd been killed and harassed over and over. And Angie's been burdened with a future of isolation! Correct. Just by my being here and laughing, this eternal hell will continue. I won't give you your little sister back. Let her cry over the family that shall not return for the next thousand years! Damn it! No compassion, no mercy! On to the second game! I'll start with the first crime. Right after it happened, I penetrated to the truth of the closed room murder where the six were killed in the chapel. Someone secretly borrowed Maria's key and, and secretly returned it to Maria's bag after the crime was over. From the time Maria received her key oh, to the shit. instant Rosa, Sorry. unsealed the envelope the next day, the key did not pass into anyone's hands. 
There was a possibility the door to the chapel had an auto lock, just like Gramps' study. In other words, it was unlocked before the crime, with a rock or something wedged in so that it couldn't close completely. Then they gave the key to Maria. Because the lock was automatic, it is possible to make a theory where the key wasn't needed. No door with an automatic lock exists other than Kinzo's study. The Master Chief... The victims locked the door from the inside. One of the victims was the culprit, and the person killed the other five. They pretended to be dead. The six were already dead by the time they were discovered. All of their deaths were homicides. All six were pure victims. They did not take part in a mutual murder. There were no simultaneous mutual murders. There existed humans with no alibi at the time, e.g. Kumasao-san. If we, if we assume that such a person killed the six and was hiding inside, then there are no problems. There was no one hiding in that chapel. Therefore, your killer hiding in the building locked room scenario does not hold. What's wrong? Is that all, Shiramiya Butler? It's not so easy once you get to the second game, right? <laughs> it was a thundering exchange of red and blue truth. Stakes and wedges of blue truth that I sent flying attacked one after the other, and Beto cut them down one after another with her red truth, her red treasured sword, knocking them all down. But the blood she lost from the first game was probably serious. This intense exercise is putting an even greater strain on her. You'll see her breath growing ragged. That's why I can't hold back now! I'll corner that witch! This time, I'll break through her! Not yet! Ah, it's useless! It's all useless! My twisted logic isn't finished yet. Then what about this? The food they were given had small bombs in it which exploded from the insides of their stomachs. In other words, the crime is possible through Trap X, the details of the bomb they couldn't swallow without noticing, and that couldn't bl blow open their stomachs is a devil's proof. I refuse to explain! <laughs> <laughs> What the hell's that? Small bombs. <laughs> Abito failed to knock down the blue wedge that flew like an angel at a breaking pitch. Let out a loud thunk as a gadget itself deeper into her left shoulder. However, even as the breaking pitch hit her, her left didn't seem to be stopping. Yeah, I get it. Even I think that theory is pretty screwed up. Ha! <laughs> Laugh as much as you want. Got a problem with that? None. Quite a pleasurable, reckless argument. Next up is the closed room with Jessica and Cannon. No problems there. If the culprit was one of the servants, they could have used a master key. It's not even a locked room! After that, there was an attack in the servant room from the mysterious person who seemed to be Cannon, and Nanjo and Kumasawa were killed, right? I had already proclaimed Cannon's death in red before that time. So, who was that Cannon? If Cannon Kun's death was declared with the red, there's no way he's alive. Therefore, there is a chance that it was someone else in disguise that would make the group that attacked mistake the person for Cannon Coon. They would never mistakenly think any other person was Cannon. Just like the heredity of Kinzo's name, there's possibly that Cannon's name was inherited by someone. You suppose that Cannon Coon was killed, a different person succeeded his name, and that and this person attacked them. It's not like a watermelon being squashed rang out, and the blue edge and 
was buried deep into Libido's left flank. Maybe it hit, maybe it, it hit in a bad place, since it's going to be really effective. After leaning out and moaning for a while, she laughed it off as they were trying to make it seem like a no big deal. Yeah, I get it. That must have hurt a lot! <laughs> Once again, you've just set up some human as the culprit as if it were nothing. You truly are gabbing on about things you've never been able to open your mouth and say on the game board. And yet, it's valid. That reckless argument is pleasurable. Truly pleasurable. This isn't pain. It's pleasure! When Beardo howled, the wedge that had pierced her was blasted away, but the wounds remained, and she continued to be tormented by a fierce pain. You ready? I'll keep going! My Bluetooth of the last murder in, in the second game, the three who died in Ad Natsuhi's room, should still be valid even with the 18th person X denied. You have a counter-argument for that in red? If you don't, the second game is all mine, too! No, I don't! Fighting over such trivial matters bores me! I'll give it to you. I'll give you the second game. Is that she acknowledged her loss in the second game? Two blue stakes gouged through Beato's chest this time. The witch's lungs were gouged, as were her intestines. Her face twisted in anguish. Her body twisted as she gasped in pain. Does it hurt? Hurt. No, no, this just tickles. <laughs> <laughs> At least compared to having your entire body torn to bits and turned to a pile of scrap meat, like your SISTER! I'll make you scrap meat too, then you can be siblings, all mixed together like ground beef and pork. <laughs> I'll beat you to death! I'll tear you to bits the same way! Next! The third game! How long are you gonna sit around all worn out like that? I've only just started knocking you down to hell! <sighs> Naturally, as if something like this could wear me down! You're right. We're still just getting started! Come, let us begin the third game, starting with the six linked closed rooms. You supposedly did penetrate this closed room at the time. But then you killed off Kinzo. By the time I theorized that Gramps was the culprit. After killing the other five and stringing the, key the keys along across each room, he constructed his own closed room in the boiler room. And that there, he died in an accident while carrying out some kind of scheme, burning to death in the boiler. But I have declared that Gramps was already dead. I've denied my own theory myself. Ironically enough. However! There's no problem! There are plenty of people who could have, who could have committed the crime besides Gramps! You can claim that the, the adults who were in the middle of the family conference at the time were all in it and committed the crime together! All five master keys were discovered, each in the pocket of one of the servants! The individual room keys were found inside envelopes alongside the corpses. In short, all keys related to the linked rooms were locked inside the linked rooms. No key could have been returned from outside the room using a crack in the door, a crack in the window, a vent, or any place of the sort. And they were killed with poison gas. Even if a key couldn't pass through, gas could, right? But this murder was carried out from the from outside the locked room. 
all of them had fatal wounds that appeared to be gunshot wounds. Murdering them from outside the room would have been impossible. And I shall say more with the red. When not alive, and the five other than Kinza were killed, the killer was always in the same room as them. I already declared in red at the time that there were no suicides. After, after the murder of each person in their respective rooms, the cult constructed a linked, a linked locked room. But there was no way for the culprit to return to the, the key from the last room to the inside of the locked room. But they did manage to return it. The first person to discover the corpse just had to pretend to find the key and pull it from the corpse's pocket. They couldn't fully block the, re the retort of that blue stake. But yet it was pushed back by the blue wedges that were un unleashed on her one after another. Finally failed to block one and, and once again took a severe wound. <laughs> As she howled in pain, she pulled the blue wedge that had pierced her right arm. Vieto's entire body had been broken apart and pierced with blue wedges, stakes, and blades over and over again. And now she was totally covered in blood. But even so, Vieto grinned, cackling as though this was amusing. <laughs> How could a man who's promised to bring Angie's parents home a voice of theory whose parents are culprits? Splendid. Even that's just fine, right? Go be a big happy family, getting their hands dirty with mass murder. Then return to Angie, stained with blood that will never come off! How could we expect anything less than the people who've returned alive from the witch's island? Just what was that mincemeat Angie needs? <laughs> ah, shut up! I'll kill you! I'll tear you apart! I need to waste your time begging for your life! I'll definitely give you the worst kind of death by my own hands! Yes, you probably could do it. I've explored the depths of cruelty for over a thousand years, and you probably will give me a fitting end for all that! Oh, does that hurt? Is it harsh? Or does it tickle? Is that supposed to torment me? Come on, Ushurumia Battler! There are still mysteries left! Be it already, it already counted my, my first powerful move, the 18th Person X. I'm making the number of people on the island 17. I just lim but just limiting the number of people to 17 didn't overturn the theory that Aneva was the culprit. I can crush most of the murderers in the third game this way. Blood from all of the body, all over the body of the Golden Witch. I cornered her this time thoroughly without mercy. Isn't a game play to decide who wins and who loses? Yeah, we aren't playing. Even the time I spent playing and fighting like this delays my trip home. In our isolation, Angie will continue to have her heart torn apart by loneliness and sadness. I have to go back to Angie as fast as I can. You're all worn out. Standing at death's door, are you? Still doesn't burden me. Something like this. <laughs> it tickles. <laughs> it looks like you don't need any mercy. I never asked for it in the first place. I'm going all out. Do so. When our roles will reverse, I show no mercy. So you ought to do the same when given the chance. Otherwise, I'll summon another isolated Angie from a different world. And this time I'll tear off her arms and legs, stick her with a spear and roast her. Okay? <laughs> Shut up! Never again. Not my family. Not my relatives. Not any of the servants. I won't let you, I won't let you make them your playthings. 
I've already broken through all the mysteries in the fourth game with the blue truth. The only one left is the very last one from the third game. Only the murder of Dr. Nanjo. <laughs> Have I already been cornered so far? <laughs> what a precarious state I'm in. <laughs> she coughed violently, spitting up blood. Yeah, her insides have been punched through so many times. It was only natural. In other words, the mystery of Dr. Nanjo's murder is the last line of defense for you being a witch, right? As you say, if you defeat that, you mean that all of my mysteries have been defeated. Unless I counter one of your truths with some new red truth, or present a new mystery, I will die. You don't look like someone who's been pushed into a corner, standing on the brink. You still have some kind of hidden pitch up your sleeve, right? Well, who knows? I have already tired of the too long life after a thousand years. Oh shit, fuck. Sorry. <laughs> I've started to think that half of this life ended by a rival like you, who I stumbled upon at the very end, might not be so bad. <laughs> you can do it, can't you? Do it. I beg you. Kill me. I'm always the one killing, and I've never had the experience of being killed. I've killed the 18 of you hundreds of times, but I haven't been killed myself even once. So I want you to experience it myself. Just once myself <laughs> There's a graceless show of boldness, unchanged from before. The blood dripped from her mouth. Her once beautiful dress was covered with holes. And blood poured from all over her body, making her physical appearance stand in sharp contrast to her attitude. Maybe that maybe the shot she'd taken to the flank was still tormenting her. And she was still pressing down at it unconsciously, without a trace of grace. But I've got no time for pity. As long as I feel sympathy for the for this witch, my family and I won't be released from this place. Until I defeat her, we won't be able to go home. In the outside world, it may be possible for even enemies to understand each other when circumstances change. The pure evil does exist. Even that brings misfortune just by existing. And is to be spared no compromise. Just by its continued existence alone, it's evil. I don't pity you. Look how you don't show pity for any of us! Well, of course. All of you are just pieces in the game. It's just unbelievably fun to think about which six to kill in the beginning, how to kill the next two, and whether I can find a much, much more grotesque method of murder. You see? Hey, Battler, I've reformed a little. So forgive me this time, too. If you do, I'll change my methods of killing into something a little better, okay? I'll listen to how you want them to be killed and in what order. Got it? It's so fun, toying with people's lives. I'm sure you could think of a way to turn Angie into a pile of scrap meat much, much more thoroughly. Come. Butler, try to expose the truth of Nunjo's murder. The eighteenth person X have been defeated, but I won't give in. Stop that witch breathing cold. The witch is breathing cold. The end of the third game. That's and rather the survivors at that point in time. Butler, Ava, and Jessica, and Nanjo were all uninvol uninvol uninvolved with Nanjo's murder, and it was also proclaimed that he was murdered directly. By someone before his eyes. All other people had all the people had the strongest possible alibi by having their deaths proclaimed in red. I'll break through this. With these in the 18th person X. Think! Don't stop thinking! Her red doesn't only bind me. It's also supposed to be her a weak point. I've gotta somehow use it against uh, against her. Nah. That's right! There's still a gap! 
Yeah, this way I can break through it. This way Beatrice's Legend of the Witch is finished. True, the others probably were dead. However, the time at which their deaths was, were declared and read was not the instant Dr. Nanjo died. Strictly speaking, it was the fight between me and Ava after Dr. Nanjo's corpse was found. In other words, if someone was who was alive at the time that Dr. Nanjo was killed died before Ava proclaimed that death, you can sew right through that crack. In other words, it's like this. The culprit was among those people who were not confirmed dead prior to Ava's declaration of the deaths. And that person had managed to skillfully play dead in the beginning, and for us to leave them alone. They made us think that they had died, while their deaths still hadn't been declared in red. They then they killed Dr. Nanjo, and after that they died for some reason. And after that, Ava declared their death in red. That theory can explain Dr. Nanjo's murder. How's that, Beatrice? When he forcefully asked that question, there was a terrible sound that could only be likened to that of a compressor. And the blue stake that was as thick as a log appeared from under the earth and skewered the golden witch, Beato, pulling her up into the air. Ugly tearing sounds rang out, and each time a blue stake or wedge would, ab would appear and pierce Beatrice's body. When that finally ended, her tragic form was exposed there, pin cushioned by more than ten stakes and wedges all across her body and dripping with blood, dangling and crucified. There was none of the dignity of the brutal witch who had sneered at the honor of the dead and toyed with and killed hundreds of the living. The rain which had started falling at some point quietly tormented the crucified witch. As Balor heaved with his breathing, he waited for some kind of answer from the Golden Witch, although it wasn't long. It took the witch a bit of time to show any signs of life. It hurts. It hurts. You've got what you deserved. Now you can experience a portion of the pain felt by all those you've killed. Even as he said that, it seemed Balor lost a little of his momentum at this extremely pathetic sight. Even if it was an enemy, he couldn't look straight at a woman who exposed in such a brutal fashion. But even so, unless he destroyed Beatrice, this battle wouldn't end. Butler, I beg you. <laughs> Huh? You let out a sob. It hurts. It really hurts. And it. And it. Even with this, I still. can't die. <laughs> Even though it hurts so much, I still can't die. <laughs> what are you asking of me? End it. Release me from this pain. Vita's expression was soaked with blood and tears. Beth certainly had been tricked by her at one point. He was probably able to suspect that her expression, that even her tears were an act. However, Butler believed in those tears. After all, those tears had the red of truth mixed in with them. What should I do? What can I do to end your pain? I'm going to expose everything. This is my heart. Your heart? Only 
Dino. No. Me. Just let me die. Were those tears from pain and torment? Or else? Either way, that pathetic expression was painful for Battler to look at, even after burning with such anger. Quickly, go back to Angie. I'll listen to your request. Not so that I can go back, but to end your pain. Then... You... But... Uh, In her last breath, Ido summoned up all of her remaining strength, and managed to close both of her hands into fists. A red light began to gather at those fists, and she lifted her arms, as though appealing to the heavens for something. You'll be able to kill me. All of me. My heart. Crush it. Gives it. Okay. The red light around both her arms gradually began to strengthen. After saying that much, her face tilted to the side a bit, and her right arm lost its light and flopped down. But her left arm alone did not lose its light, and it held out toward the heavens. Then, before Battler's eyes, another Beato appeared with a faint form. Transparent like a curtain. The crucified Beato had already lost consciousness. However, the newly appeared faint Beato quietly looked at me, her eyes expressionless, expo and spoke. Ushiro Mira Battler, I will now kill you. And? And right now. There is no one other than you on this island. The only one alive on this island is you. Nothing outside the island can interfere. I understand. This is the last mystery Beatrice will be able to make as a witch. He's trying to offer it to me, entreating me to solve this final mystery and kill her. Do it. I'll accept your final mystery. You are all alone on this island, and of course I am not you. Yet I am here, now, and am about to kill you. Like a souped-up version of the mystery of Dr. Nanjo's murder. So? Who am I? Is that your final question? Who am I? And Beatrice slowly approached me and, still expressionless, held me. Yeah, I get it, Beato. I'll kill you. Don't worry. I also slowly hold held her head. Then as a piece, I left the game board.
私も差し出せるわだからどうか願いを叶えてあなたが探してた春はここよそんなとこにはないのたどり着けない Um, we will only be uh, giving a con a sec because she needs to get a drink. But uh, this is not. She the apparently, end yet. she apparently needs a drink. So, we will. I'm good. Running. Okay. Apparently. You're All right, we're just gonna run right into the next one. So we're hold off your right into hold it, off so your shit one... until afterwards, please. Let's everyone back <laughs> in their seats. Unknown. Fragment number 56109842361515. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Scattered over a big bed were cute jelly beans of various colors and chocolate coins. A fork was stuck into a shortcake peeking out of a gift box. And there were decanters with drinks of various colors lined up on a side table. But the color of the partially finished drink that had been poured into a cup was venomous, matching none of the decanters. And I've probably been playing around mixing various things together. That can be lots of fun if you don't mind the taste. On top of the fluffy bed were several colorful big pills like something from a dream. And on this bed that looked like something out of a child's dream world. Burncastle lay face down, and Lamb the Delta lay face up, clutching a pillow and relaxing. <laughs> it was pretty thrilling this time, wasn't it? I got really panicky when Beata said she'd stop the game. What a rude witch. To start a game like this and try to end it by throwing it away. Wasn't Angie a good piece? After Beata ran for it, Angie dragged her back and made her resume the game. Although, it's a shame that she gave Battler a little too much enthusiasm. After all, I knew Battler was a softie. No kidding. He looked like he might have even tried to go easy on Beata, his enemy. 
I was uneasy that, like the last game, he might actually feel compassion for Beato and take the game in a weird direction. Angie was a trump card to get Battler back on track when he mistook his goal. Although I wanted her to support him and a bit more even before her using her app. She really did get used right off the bat. What a waste for a piece that required so much preparation. <laughs> Good thing I shackled her with that rule about not giving up her name. If that hadn't been set up, the brother-sister tag team would have swallowed Beato up and won in a blink of an eye. I thought it'd be a chance for them to press her all at once. But your mark was so restrictive that I couldn't make the best use of her. Ah, <sighs> what a waste that piece was. Isn't it obvious that such an unfair piece would have been retired right away? Well, in the end, she did a good job of venting the suspension of the game, and that helps me out too. The way she made both our interests match up is what made her a truly wonderful piece. She was an innocent kid like Battler, so it was easy to get her to do as I said. Morons and impulsive types make the best pieces. <sighs> I really can't stand losing that piece. By now, that kid's minced meat. Hey, let's make hamburgers out of her later on. Oh wait, didn't you like girls the more? I wonder what little sister tastes like. <laughs> Hilarious. Is it really okay for you to be so relaxed? Thanks to Angie, Battler has gotten all fired up. I'm pretty sure he started a hot pursuit of Beato, making this game be take a big turn in my favor, right? I mean, didn't Battler just solve almost all the mysteries up until now? Uh, not even close. Almost all of Battler's brute truths were wrong. Beato's lukewarm res is full of holes. If she had any brains in her, she'd slip through it easily by setting up a suitable web of twisted logic. Yeah, it really ticks me off. If it were me, I'd thoroughly cut down all of it with the, with the red. Oh, really? And I was sure that those were all correct. Well, I don't know about that small bomb part throw. Not all of Battler's brood truths were valid. When talking about the first game, Beato clearly declared that she guarantees the identities of all unidentified corpses. This defeats Battler's theory about about the culprits of Eva Hideyoshi closed room murder being someone who faked up faked up a corpse. Next. Anna might have died in an accident in the boiler room, but... <laughs> what kind of accident could drive a stake into his chest? Are you a moron? I'll slice it up with that red treasured sword thing. Anna didn't die in an accident. For the next one, the murders of the three including Genji in the parlor, the thought that it was a simultaneous murder where they shot each other clockwise pattern at the same time is laughable. Genji, Kumasawa, and Nanjo were not killers. The final trap X to kill Natsui was also ridiculous. The thing that shot Natsui wasn't a trap. It was a real shooting murder with a gun raised and the trigger pulled. <laughs> sucks for you. You shouldn't do that. Saying something like that in red. That kid's trying to say that she bounced Natsuhi's bullet back with magic and killed her. <laughs> oh my. 
How terrible of me, you're right. Even the blue truth for the second game was way too naive. When the six were murdered in the chapel, the culprit was inside the chapel. That guy keeps trying to explain things using Trap X. What the heck is Trap X, some weird mystery novel cliché? It's also laughable to say that in the case where Nanjo and Kumasawa were killed in the servant room, someone else inherited Cannon's name. The only one who can go by the name of Cannon is the person himself. No other human can adopt that name. And that theory about borrowing the master key from Rosa for Natsu's room is also worthless. After the master keys came into Rosa's control, never did any of them leave her hands. Except for the time where she lent the one to Battler to unlock Natsu's room. I can keep going, but just take a quick look at them. Turns out like this. Get it? Forget taking a quick look. You've just denied Battler's blue truth for the first and second games across the board. My my, what a shame. If Battler heard, he'd faint. Right. Mieta wasn't cornered at all. Looks like that kid's a pretty good actress after all. I'm sure she planned to make it look like she was getting cornered this game. Then sometime next game, bang, she'll slice it up with a single red stroke to make Battler freak. <laughs> and then I'm sure she'll say it again with a huge smile. Which is never getting to a pinch. <laughs> Then that whole tragic atmosphere as though Beato was getting cornered was all an act. Isn't it obvious? She really is a great actress. Even though she wasn't cornered at all, it felt like an astonishing last episode climax. She's totally the winner for the Best Supporting Actress this year. Oh, but of course, I'm the star. You do fine too, Burn. At the end, she said something like kill me and laid out a big riddle. Wasn't that her last stand, with Beato to be finished for good if that riddle was solved? <laughs> Come on, were you seriously tricked too, Burn? That wasn't even close to a last stand. Beato still holding back a killer hidden move. When she stuck out both hands to give the final riddle, did you notice how she lowered just her right hand? Yeah, now that you mention it. Is that what that meant? Sure is. That kid still has plenty of hidden moves left. And none of the mysteries have been solved. That tension, like she had been exposed in the next episode, would be the last. She truly is a genius at acting. Yeah, I want to see her knock Battler down to the very bottom right away. That kid's been totally encouraged by her North Wind and Sun strategy from last time, right? I'm sure Battler will sympathize with Beato again and fall for it completely. After all, a single tear from a woman can fool a man, totally economical and profitable. I wonder if Battler will get caught by the same move again. I've got to spur him on so he never feels sympathy again. 
Although Angie's mincemeat seems to have done that pretty well. A power up from an Angie flavored hamburger. Oh! <laughs> of course I won't lose either. Starting here, I'll thoroughly support Beato to rally her up enough to compete with Battler. Beato won't lose. I mean, I'm threatening her with a wonderful punishment game if she loses. Your punishment games are seriously not cool, so you should go a little easy on her. I've decided what to do for your next punishment game, Vern. Wanna hear? Wanna hear? No. Come on, ask me. Guess what? Guess what? I'll lock you in a wonderful, wonderful castle. That castle will be surrounded by pure white castle walls 12 kilometers to a side with a height of 10 meters. Magic and tricks are prohibited. You really couldn't jump over that, right? One billion four hundred and forty million cubic meters. You can stop there. I already know what you're going to say. <laughs> and that place will start getting buried with gems one every day. I'll lock you in it until the castle walls are packed with them and you've been buried to death with gems. Isn't that a wonderful romantic punishment game? If you multiply the length of the walls by five and make it one-tenth its current height, I wouldn't mind if you shut me in it right now. Really? That would make it 3,600,000,000 cubic meters, right? This time period for the punishment game would be more than double, right? Uh, you'll be my pr prisoner for such a long time? I love you, Burn. I really love you. Lambda Delta playfully approaches Burn Castle, who yawned, looking bored as she touched the bottom of Lambda Delta's chin, as though cuddling a cat. You're betting on Battler's victory. And I'm betting on an internal tie for the two of them. Doesn't that mean no one's betting on Beato's victory? I wouldn't. Her chances of winning are zero. Oh, <laughs> how truly pitiful being told by the Witch of Miracles that there's no chance of a miracle. Although, I wouldn't bet on her either, right? I can say that with certainty. It's also pretty sad when the Witch of Certainty says that you're certainly screwed. Unusually for them, they giggled together. I wonder how this game will resolve itself. Yeah, that's the one thing we can't predict. That's why it's fun. I won't permit escaping our suspension any longer. I'll certainly make them continue their game and I won't let them run away. Even though I can't even imagine what will happen next. I know it certainly won't end that way. At the very least, it won't end with Beato's victory. I mean, think about it. Neither of us is betting on Beato's victory. In other words, if it looks like Beato's gonna win, she'll have to deal with us two great witches as enemies. Exactly. Our powers are most in equilibrium when balancing between a tie and battler's advantage. If it tips too much in Beato's favor, both of us will line up along the same vector and drag Beato back. In other words, the instant Beato's in the superior position, she'll have to deal with both of, the, both of us as enemies. <laughs> A common front with Burn sounds fun. Thanks. But I'm not going into a Conpinto candy bath with you. 
Aw, and I was gonna cover you with melted marshmallows. While taking a competitive shower. How pitiful. That child is a living toy. A doll you caught so that you could play with me, Amanda. I'm good at playing with dolls. I can really do it well, okay? I'm proud of being able to play with a single toy for hundreds of years without getting tired of it. You're her ally at some times and oppose her at others. Toying with her for all eternity. How pitiful. That child, that kid is our doll now. <laughs> That's right, that kid is our doll. And no end has been prepared for that kid except for the ones the two of us desire. In other words, I can say for sure that this can only end by repeating a tie for eternity because of me. Or else would be a to losing and being destroyed because of you, Burn. <laughs> as far as this game ending with Beato's victory goes. I will proclaim that as the Witch of Miracles. And I will proclaim it as the Witch of Certainty. Beato certainly cannot win. Cannot win. And a, and a miracle certainly, certainly will, will not, not occur. occur. And that'll do it! Congratulations, you have finished the Umaneko questions arc. The oh, first God half. Oh, Oh, yeah, we've unlocked a new emote. Mm -hmm. Oh, hell yeah. Burn smirk. <laughs> I've been waiting for this. <laughs> also, thank you for uh, showing up, Mor Mor Mori Morinda. Thank you for showing up. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for following. Also, thank you to to Ran Iwi for following us as well. Yes, we will. Jesus Christ, we will type the sign again, or sorry, we'll type the red truth. Uh, Umaneko and I'm not, uh, Umaneko has nothing to do with that. Well, but Umaneko, Yashi, that's we'll not have, what I meant. Just this movie also has nothing to do with Yashi. Well, like, I, I mean, like, yeah, but like last time, like, like we had a, we just want to make it known that like a, a lot of people think you, uh, we don't want you to think like too much or at least have like. Higurashi brain rot while thinking about Uneko, you know what I mean? Not saying that Higurashi's bad, but like... I'm talking about know. that L word you don't like. A shout out to Sayaka Uhara. You're a good voice actress. <laughs> what L word? What I mean, the... I'm just joking around. What is the L word you don't like? L word? It has a C what? in it. You want to be in lesbians with her? I was, making a, I was making a lolicon joke. Oh, what? that one. But yeah. Bone, they're it's called terrorists. <laughs> A anywho. Yeah. But yes. Yo, shout Wait, to this die. voice activity, fuck. <laughs> we, just, we just tap the sign, make sure everyone knows. Take me to fucking church, bro, that chorus. I've never heard that version of Discode before, holy shit. Really? Yeah, I've never heard that version before. Also, I want to apologize, uh, that, that last bit was auto scrolling, so I had to fucking schmoove. <laughs> the original version of the game does not do the auto scrolling bit. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> Mega shout out to Zeta and ZTS. Yeah, ZTS yeah. fucking crushed it. Go I, uh, I, I, uh, I, I also I, shout uh, out to the Motoki Zakuro because mm -hmm. fire. 
Oh yeah, we, I follow, she follows me on Twitter. <laughs> we, oh nice. We also I got a too. decent attempt at synchronized dialogue. We've we mm -hmm. fucked up many times, but we got it that time, more or less. Yeah. That was awesome. Also, we kind of went through this chapter kind of fast. I thought we'd take yeah, a little bit. That's because Orange was going quick, 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 quick. Yeah, Orange was a like bunny hopping. I kind of, I was, um, I was definitely a little bit excited to get through the first half to get to the more um, interesting bit, which is why I was starting to fucking go stupid during the first half. I was yeah. just matching up and just heading along with it, man. Huh? Fucking I wish moved. Up. Holy shit! <laughs> I never, I never thought of the phrase "bunny hopping" through a visual novel before, but now I have. I mean, shit. Uh, B, see me read it. <laughs> fucking Father Morgana. I blitz shit. Hey, I can uh, read rest really fast. Alchemist. Yeah. Why do you say uh. rest in peace? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, like they died long ago, did they not? Yeah, it's been or a was while. That recent. That doesn't mean they can't rest in peace. I mean, like, they're even in peace though. Also, Orange, bouncing the dialogue off with you was fun, dude. Yeah, yeah, that's my favorite. Those are my favorite fucking scenes. Shit. Hey, yo. No, I think that's just door it's closing. Just oh. Alrighty. The next episode has been unlocked. Are they all on this what? thing? No. Oh, yeah, they are. So. No, they are. Oh, they wow. Are. wow. Wait, no, no. Go back to yeah. the mini. Look, wait, wait, look. Look. What the fuck? Huh? Oh. Huh? Oh, this is the PlayStation 3 and uh, uh, cutscene. Uh, oh, this credits. is the this is the mod credits. Okay, should we uh, uh maybe look away in case well, they have some? Well, will will they have shit that these readers are unaware of? Just start no. screaming. Shut up, the is. squirrel lord! It's just translation. It's translation. Just, it's translation. It's translation. It's just, you know, you know what? just don't look. I'll I can't literally. Look. I can't you know, skip just, it anyway. I literally can't skip it. You know, just, just tell just everybody in here, oh, just don't guys, fucking guys, look if you don't guys, know. Guys, you know, just guys, start screaming guys, if there is spoilers. I'm not even just, paying attention. It is just translation staff. It's not that big a deal. Relax. I'm not even paying okay, attention to that because the best and only name on there I could pay attention to was Squirrel Lord. Well, I mean, like, again, like, it's just to be precautionary. You never know. Mm -hmm. Also, you never know if, like, there's a translator that's like, oh, big plot twist that ruins the entire visual novel 105. Also, I can't also, skip this is it. True. It won't let me for some fucking reason. Well, I mean, these are the translation guys, so they probably know how to avoid spoilers. Uh, the OG do guy. they? Uh, Nasu for oh, oh my fucking <laughs> god. And for the Higurashi mm -hmm. Mimineko crossover mobile game, they have hard-ass spoilers in there. Mm. That's a mobile game? Hey, thanks. There's a mobile game. Um... Not look it up, because it now just fucking has legit Mimineko spoilers. And I'd rather yeah, not. I'm just asking you if it's a legitimate thing or not. Yeah, the gotcha game. Yeah, they, they just got the Oh, oh it's a gotcha game. game? Wait, which mm -hmm. gotcha game? What are you talking about? The Higurashi don't, don't, don't look don't it look up. Because they did don't a look it up. crossover, and it has spoilers in it now. Wait, can we see the Mimineko sprites in the new art style? No! No! Whoa, 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 the back can show some of them. You can, them. can show them Beatrice. So just any, if they're spoiler characters, just don't show those. Just yeah, show spoiler characters. that's fine. I want to see I want to see Battler in the new style. Wait, wait who's all has the new oh. style? Well... Oh, I'll shit my boy if it's not Krauss. What the fuck? Data caching. Data caching. Oh. At the Jeez. text you have the non-spoiler opening. Would you like the spoiler spoiler opening? I wonder if the uh, only sure. credit is updated and given what? Huh. It's just doing it's 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 caching its data. It's very simple. You know what? Data I can data. I can wait what no wait, that's wrong. Hold All right, on. here we go, the new one. Whoa! Woo! 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 Oh, oh, holy the welcome to Umineko no Nako Koroni Chiru. Chiru. And now we start episode five. No, anyways. We are not starting episode five right now. This is. This <laughs> oh, is I, really no, I am not about to go another round tonight, folks. I really need to get the bees like Umineko quizzes before we start getting answers. Alrighty okay. then. So, like, can we see those 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 Higurashi Umineko sprites? No, uh, we're, I'm getting... not all of them. Anyway, I have you know, I have one for Canon, but like, hey, hold on, Beato, Shannon, Canon. And That's all. No That's all we can show you. There, I'll put. I have the canon one. Let me post my boy. Yeah, also, uh, the I got these from the oh, seventh expansion wiki. So, like, for the most part, they should be safe, right? Uh, mm -hmm. can, can I be fucking real? 
uh, uh, the one thing that I don't get is why the fuck does Canon have red eyes in this? Oh man, those are some weird is... edge highlights. Like, I don't know what the fuck's going on with that. I legit don't know. They look more orange to me. A style choice was made, I don't know what to tell you. Or maybe okay. they're brown. Well, I mean, like, they're usually, like, black or something like that. They look brown to me. Or brownish, maybe, yeah. That Beato is cute. Uh, that's Canon. Oh, fuck. There is Shannon. Is there one for Battler? Uh... There is straight up not one for Battler. Well... So, should we do the post-discussion? Yeah. Go yes, nuts. absolutely. Alright, I'll have to uh, go through my notes. Chiru means scattering. There's a lot of red and blue truth I have to I have to go through in the Umi Notes channel. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, you can go in the meantime, Khan, as I try to gather my thoughts. Unless somebody else wants to start. I would like to go ahead and refer to something I said all the way back in chapter... in chapter what? Yes. Yeah? Mm-hmm. One second while I find that note in the Umi thing. Okay. Yeah, it's, it was all the way back. Give me, like, a second. Well, hey, you know, while you're looking for that, anybody else want to say something? Go right. for it, people. I'll go. Alright, so I noticed, like, uh, there was a theory that potentially Jessica and Kyrie did not, uh, act, were not the actual ones that called Battler. Uh, so I was wondering, okay, uh, will their bodies be found next to a phone hanging? And there was. But this doesn't necessarily deconfirm anything. Uh, it could have been that an imposter, that she did call somebody or she died before even touching the phone, and the imposter picked it up and dropped it near the body. Uh, and also, about the whole golden thread thing, uh, it's possible that there was never a golden thread, and that an imposter just said there was. Uh, there could have been, uh, or sh maybe something was shown that looked like a golden thread, but something else killed Kyrie. Uh, there also was a mention of a of Cannon having a laser beam. Uh, not sure if I zoned out, but I don't know where G Battler got that idea. But there's like you know there's welding torches. Somebody told tor somebody told him that Cannon had a par apparently had an energy sword or an energy laser beam of some kind. I right. want to say pop. I want to say that that was Kyrie. Okay, well it's on the phone. How you take it? So yes, yeah. But Potentially a fake Kyrie, or maybe not, I don't know, or maybe some crazy shit happened that made her mistake what happened. But yeah, it's totally possible to cut through those things with a welding torch. I don't think anything was brought up in that bat, like in that uh, conversation between Beat. I almost said Beatler, uh, Beato and Patler. Uh, what else do I got? Huh. Yeah, I also didn't. Think about I, we we came across the idea that Beato's name got passed down and that kind of eventually got confirmed. I guess like it it seems to have been exchanging name people a lot that name, but yeah, I don't think anybody really thought of the idea of Kinzo's name getting passed down. Did anybody come across that idea before that we got to that part? Kind of, but not necessarily because of what you're thinking of. And I mostly ponder that the name Beatrice could have been passed down is just like a title. It yeah. didn't occur to me that Kinzo would actually be passed down just the same. Goldsmith. I don't think somebody would just give the name Goldsmith to a random child. There was also something interesting that they said during this. They said that a lot of people on this island go by different names. Which does go ahead and make a lot of sense for a lot of reasons. But that also makes me wonder. Does this mean that the Kinzo we've known this whole time isn't exactly Ushirumi Akinzo either? He probably adopted the name after what happened with the whole rest of his family dying beforehand. So then what's his real name? We don't know yet. Could it be they all have like an assigned name that, they, that was then changed to the more western one that they just aren't aware of? Could they all have unknown names? You mean that Kinzo rebranded them with different names? Uh, yeah, like, the, the parents. Could it be that they were given a birth name and then later a changed name? That would have to be the same case for the grandkids, too, because he chose out their names, too. Wait, did he? There was a point where it was mentioned. Was it? 
I, I think that this, I think you actually said this before and somebody corrected you that that wasn't the case. I, I, I was gonna say, like, I'm, in episode one, it, it was, like, explicitly said, like, I'll never forgive my old man for naming me a weird name like Battler. So it was explicitly, like, stated that the parents gave them the names. Then, yeah. remember, I remember it was for one of them. Was it only for Maria, then? I don't think, no, I think Maria was you, not uh, named by Kinzo. Like, Maria was uh, named actually, by Rosa. You, thank you. I was just confused on that front then. Thank you. Yeah, because, like, I remember you brought this up before and then somebody told you, no, Maria was not named by Kinzo. All right, my bad. All right, so I actually did have a bit more. Uh, oh, who left? Somebody leave? Uh, Charlie. Probably, Charlie probably had to leave for work stuff. Uh, uh so anyway, uh, I noticed that Lambda Delta also said that not all of the blue truths were correct, implying that some were correct. So the question is, how do you gold pan out like a bunch of the correct ones, the nuggets of truth that were guessed? It's because I think the ones that she basically outright told Bird Castle, the ones that she knew were the true ones. Wait, did she? Did That's she what know? I was thinking. Did she say which ones were true? No, she said the opposite. The ones that were lies, she told the truth versions of. Oh, alright. Like, for example, if I can go for the notes. Uh, Cannon did not die by an accident. Somebody actually killed him. Alright, yeah, I'm gonna need to go through some of that stuff if I find the time. Because that was a lot to take in and really hard for someone with my attention span. Yeah, well, don't forget that all the red, all the red and the blue from this episode oh, is available you. to you. Thank you again, AC, for that. Ah, uh, no problem. I will say there is one point where I got some out of order, but they are written down nonetheless. There. Uh, all right. So the other thing is, it is confirmed Natsui was killed by with a real gun, with a murderer, with gun in hand, gun raised. It seems that is confirmed. Not magic. It seems. The, uh, and, the, and the one where um, Genji, Kumzao, and Nanjo did not die in a Mexican standoff. Mm-hmm. Alright. I, I brought up the idea of can a non-human take the name Canon, and then AC said, uh, consider this uh, red truth from new life forms other than humans can have any connection to this game. A red uh, truth stated back in episode 3. Yeah, that's a, that's a big implication. I mean, I guess you could ask what qualifies as a life form, but, uh, I assume that might be looking a bit too deep. Uh, yeah, I mean, that kind of just implies that there were no magical beings, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I, I, I guess. All right. A lot of her truth, Lam Adultress, basically destroys some of Beatrice's... Um, well, that wasn't a Lambda Delta. You know what I mean. Because Lam Adultress actually had some red truth that actually kind of contradicts Beatrice's truth. Yeah. Thing is, Battler doesn't have access to those ones. I kind of like my idea that I posted that Beatrice is just a representation of Battler's trauma of whatever the hell actually happened. I actually what, like, like that as a metaphorical interpretation. That's pretty dope. And the reason why she just won't die is because Battler refuses to believe that whoever did kill everyone could actually have done it. See, that's just cool. I actually have theories of who might have actually did some of the murders. Let's mm -hmm. hear it. George and Shannon did the first murder. Wait, do you mean first as in episode in, one in or the first episode one? Because episode, episode one. All right. Why do you think that? It's because one of the corpses has to be fake in the first six, right? Which one is the least messed up when you we found the corpses? It was Shannon. Everyone else's face were completely destroyed. Shannon was weirdly not that destroyed. Like, it was, you could maybe tell it was partially destroyed, but you could not really tell. And she was probably the one who did all the secondary secret murders that George was not there for. I'm curious. Wait, is there anyone in this family that's like an actress or had like theater experience? No. I think so. No, not sure. I was thinking maybe the, the blood none of them like are confirmed actors in like, any way. They're all business people of different sorts. Okay, 
So there's something I actually forgot about that I want to uh, that I need to that I need to point out in the game actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up again really quickly because something something very special to me deep in my heart that I want to show you all. Please do. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. You will see. You will see in just a moment. Are you gonna take off the loading screen too? Uh, yeah, yeah I already did. I already did. Don't worry. All right, cool. All right, so we have to go back to episodes one through four again really quickly. All right. It's going to take a little bit of time. Wait, In the meantime, just keep one? talking. Uh, okay, sorry. here we go. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to go to the tip. So we're going to go to the episode four tips. And then you have to go to characters. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're going to go to characters. That's right. My mistake. <laughs> like how we know. We know All right, we're going to go to the episode four. Well, I'm used to them being called tips. Yeah. Like in the original tips. game, they're all called tips. Yeah, they're all called tips in original. That's why it's so. Helpful. There's a little bit of an extra one among the Chester sisters. Yeah, there she is. Chester five five six, a weapon of the sisters' cavalry, which serves Pendragon. Although five five six was a quiet girl who was always being teased, she was loved by everybody. However, luck was not on her side, and she suffered a brutal death in the battle with the Black Witch. She was a state of the art weapon and added color to the sisters' cavalry, which had the strong flavor of, of an honored guard. 556 was in charge of a squad fire support. She shot not to kill, but to protect her allies. But if we resurrect her, a quiet girl who is always being teased by everyone. But that's because they all love her very much. The trumpet is her specialty. Everyone skips to her lively tune. I love her design. What was it? Where where is she from? Okay, so um, um, I will say this. Uh, You know that one scene with Virgilia and like the the Chester? No, Kinzo in the... It is Chester briefly me- it is briefly mentioned in passing. Uh, Double O says Double O literally mentions Chester five five six by name, but then they go like, "Oh wait, no, that kid's dead," and she's like, "Oh fuck, she was such a good trooper." And then Kinzo questions them about like the trauma that they effectively went through and like the heartbreak they had to suffer. That was all in reference to five five six. Okay, five, then five, six. why was reference? Unless it's going to be coming up in the future. It was just one of the one of the troops that died. If it's one thing I've learned... Sorry. I'm just wondering, is she gonna appear in the rest of the other chapters? They can't tell you! Well, I mean, keep in mind the the term that she was suffered a brutal death in the battle with the Black Witch. Oh, Mm, but I... Wait, I I thought uh, Rosa did it. Hmm? Wait, let's take a look at the Angie side after this. I thought, like, 556 was the rabbit that Rosa smashed. Well, that's what Orm theorized back Mm -hmm. whenever he played this. Yeah, that's what I came up with. If I could go ahead and say something here. Go ahead, God. Thank you. If it's one thing I've learned from other mysteries is that even the most minute details do come back to go ahead and play an important role. Nah, 556 five, is more of a one-off gag. <laughs> also, Orange, uh, can uh, we go back to the characters? What? Oh, fuck. Uh. <laughs> what? What do you see? Uh, I I want to see the the, the characters on Angie's side. Mm, okay, see sure. Description for like alive and dead and all that stuff. Something else I also wanted to say from last time. At one point, I postulated whether or not the game board would be usurped by other characters, and I was sort of right and sort of wrong at the same time. This is all the characters that are on Angie's side. It's just the people that I mentioned during this story. Why? Sorry, am I coming through? Am I clear? Or you, you, you I did. Hear you. I hear you. Go ahead. No, well, I'm oh, just thank God. Is, why For a second, it, I thought it wasn't. Why isn't Sumadera listed as dead? I mean, can you go back to character? Now I'm curious. So. You could probably make her dead. Oh, uh, actually, no. Go there's no. The there's no execute and resurrect on Andrew's side. Oh. What does What does change do then? Well, click click on Kazumi. Yeah, there isn't. Yeah. Change just makes Angie into our school girl outfit. Oh. Aw. Let's take a look at Okanogi. Let's but take a look at Okanogi, our... but just because we love him. Yeah. Hey! Can we put it's Okanogi uh, in it's, the, our, uh, it's your boy. school girl outfit? Hmm? You cannot change him into a school girl outfit, regrettably. Yeah. Disappointing. Mm-hmm. Zero out of ten. I want to see Okanogi the, and Lambda's outfit. <laughs> from the... Sorry. What? Go ahead. Go, go, go. Don't ask. Just go. Right. 
from the way I'm looking at it, it seems almost as just, and this is in conjunction with something Roboot postulated over in the Umi notes. This is essentially just two kids playing a complex game with a bunch of other people. Just using them as toys for boredom. So, Roboot, to answer that minor question, of what their end is and for the purpose, these are two god beings. And they're just using Battler and Beatrice to create an endless game to appease their boredom. So, they're just dicking around. Yes. Yep. Doing they are doing a little trolling. I mean, they've said there, that plenty of times. There's gotta it be reminds me of them. how yeah. in the officially canonically in the Call of Duty Zombies series, all the characters in Zombies are just being like the play imagination of two kids. <laughs> oh yeah, that that trope. Oh, I mean, I was actually about to mention. Uh, I do not actually believe this theory, but this is a theory that came up just now. Uh, okay. what if all of this is just, like, it turns out this entire story is just two kids trying to figure out what happened on Rokenjima. Then I would be pissed. Yeah. This isn't Saint Elsewhere, man. I mean, it could be oh, also, yeah. like, them, like, you know, it's two kids, perhaps they're, like, adding magic to make, to spice it up as a story in their own minds. I fucking hate that trope. Most people do. How spicy do you think magic is? <laughs> I say it's that sweet, spicy magic that you get sometimes in some food. If it is two kids, it'd be really funny. It'd be like, with those scenes with Jessica, Ronave, Gap, and uh, George, it'd be like, I use my shield. Well, I break my shield with my shield-breaking punch. I use my super shield that can't be broken. I use my you know super-duper punch that can break through your shield. You know what, well, I just tell you, you guys and make you guys beat each other up. I win. You know what, Shelly? <laughs> that sounds stupid enough to that that might to actually hold some water. I hope not. It is just essentially two little girls playing with toys, and that mm. pisses me off. Now I'm imagining Lambda like clacking together a Beatrice and Battler figure, just like just hitting them together. I bet you fan art of that would exist. Mm. Orange, would you care to provide? No. Even if we would, if like, like we he can't show you shit, it. motherfucker. He can't. Do that. Stop assuming he can. Yeah. Okay. Another few things I've actually noticed, or at least few puzzle pieces that I've actually been putting together in my head. Something interesting. Or at least something involving Beatrice and who she truly is. Yeah? Mm -hmm. We have all these tunnels that connect the entire mansion of both Kuwadorian and the original Shiramiya mansion. We have all these prior clues and everything else here. But there's one last thing I want something else with. Orange, if you could... I want you to repeat this in red. No, no, well, I will not. Uh, I, no. I will not answer no. anything that you ask me. That, that's the point. I'm not going to tell you shit. He doesn't want to reveal anything. Crimson, we know. Okay, that was pretty funny, but yeah, I don't think we can use the red truth around here. While we're we still can neither confirm it. or <laughs> deny, but you may say what you were going to but say. But I, I would still answer. like to hear your, your question. I'm not going to answer it, but I'd like to hear it. <laughs> Believe me, that was just a half a joke. They have no. the gray obscurity. They can only say I can neither confirm nor deny or just try to repeat something that we already should know that we might have uh, not have caught. Miranda, please do not that. say anything. Please do not answer anything that Khan says. Please, Miranda, don't. <laughs> yeah, uh, please and thank you, Miranda. <laughs> Believe me, most of that was just indeed a minor reference joke for that. Plus, I always wanted to say that. <laughs> yeah. But still. This is in conjuncture, but this is just a dumb little idea that I've had, but this is just my own postulations. I think it's conjecture, by the way. Oh, is it? 
Anyhow, what is it? Okay. 30 years ago, or at least 30 years ago along toward this island, whenever Kinzo made the mansion and everything else, he set up this secondary mansion just as a place for not only his lover, but possibly illegitimate children to be. Of course, he chose this place because the woods itself are completely insane and out of ground. He spent all this time and effort and money just to make a secondary tunnel system to visit between the two manors. This, of course, means, and this is, con con this is in conjunction with other theories I've had, he trapped Beatrice, possibly, in another area, or at least in a human body and decided to keep her like a bird in a cage. Enchant the fence, make it that she can't get out, no matter what. So then the woman that he originally meets, this first Beatrice, gives birth to another one, who he names Beatrice as well. Not out of only respect, but out of love and devotion. But also as title inheritance. And again... This would explain why the younger Beatrice calls, or Beato, calls Virgilia Beatrice. She doesn't see her as her mother. She's been taught to view her as another Beatrice. She learns magic from this Beatrice. And still in the body of a human, resigns this. Or is resigned to being human because she is, once again, in the human body. No memory. Actually, hold up. This also goes back with the other theory I had. The one about Battler's soul. Oh, you're gonna hate me for this, but I think it actually gains a bit of support for me for this. The huh? one about uh, Battler's go soul? Go ahead. Okay. This is a massive fucking leap, and this is totally all magic related. Oh, with it. Yeah, what yeah. If the original Beatrice had all of her memories and everything. This original Beatrice would have been Virgilia. But when the new Beatrice came along, she was somehow given all of the other memories and things of Beatrice like a soul swipe or a soul copy or something. So she is a clone. No, 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 no not a clone. clone with the memories, I mean. No. Like an offspring, but you get the memories and shit. Yeah, so a clone with your memories. It's like EVE Online, where you can transfer your consciousness and you get all your memories and stuff. What the fuck is EVE Online? Don't it's worry a cool it. video no, game. No, focus no, on, right focus on, on, focus on him in the next Not important. Go right ahead, Con. What the fuck was that? Sorry, sorry. Just That's that's a conversation for another time. EVE Online is a whole different <laughs> subject. <laughs> what was that, like, shit you guys were, like, you just don't want to talk about it? <laughs> no, we don't want tangents. We don't want tangents. Okay. Just keep it on Umineko, please. Uh, okay. So then, Virgilia dies on this island, right? But her ghost is trapped there because of the island's weird mystic bullshit because it was enchanted by the priests and everything. And that leaves Beato there alone. And Kinzo still keeps her locked up because she's now got the vessel in power that the old Beatrice had. So then, if we go ahead and assume that all of this is correct, then Rosa comes along, brings Beato out of that cage, because she's got the toxin, and it disenchants the fence, and then she accidentally kills Beato. So her soul and the magic get trapped on this island as well, and then it gets filled with hatred, and she gathers energy for the next... 30 fucking years, which shuts down this other port because Kinzo is now aware that Beato is dead, but he still stays on the island and does all this anti-magic stuff because he knows she's going to be pissed and powerful in the next 30 years. So then he sets up this entire fucking system of anti-magic on the main surface, and he magic proofs his office, and he gets the epitaph and all of this bullshit. So that way, whenever he can easily manipulate and go full uh, mastermind puppet man on his entire fucking family just to get this one witch back. I'd like that all to be true, but like this entire chapter... Seems to be like spitting in your face that magic is not real. Like it's frustrating. 
Because I went to see some real magic, and we saw it in that fight with Anji and Sumadera or whatever. But it's quite possible it was just uh, Amakusa sniping them. Could be. That could be a possibility. I'm just speaking from a purely magical standpoint. Eh, Maybe. What I'm I'm saying is it really does seem to think that, like, again, like I'm saying, this entire chapter is just like, Hey, all this magic bullshit that just gets more and more ridiculous to sort of imply that it, no, it's not magic. It's just all real shit. <laughs> I mean, I really want that magic shit to be real, but I just don't think that's the answer. Yeah. Believe me. Believe me. If that's the entire thing, then it also makes sense for the Battler soul theory. Because then, because of all the magic and shit that's on the island, Battler wouldn't truly be dead because his soul and his ghost would still be attracted to the island, and then he could easily just possess or somebody, and their consciousness would fade and get replaced with the Battler. So then there'd be a fake Battler, but with the real Battler. Khan, I would like to. Ask Can you, you translate you that to a language I speak? Khan, I would like to ask. Yeah, do you battler, believe? Wait, 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 I'm talking. I'm talking. Your battler. Is there any other really? battlers I know oh, about? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, hold on. Please. Stop. One at a time. Anyway, I, ready. I'm talking. I I grab the torch here. I would like to ask. Uh, do you believe this theory, Khan? Partially, because I'm also trying to consider this in realistic terms as well. So a lot of this is subject to change, and right now in my head, I am currently replacing several parts and pieces as we speak. Uh, if I- if I- if I may ask something, could you repeat that? Because you were going a bit fast and I kind of lost you a bit. Like, what part of it? You- you're- The- the later end, you started going really fast and I- I honestly lost track, I want to hear it again. What part, though? Uh, t- the beginning? Uh, not, not from the beginning, but like... Uh, when you started we, talking fast, wait, take a guess as to like your, your own interpretation of when fast is. I mean, I thought I was talking fast the entire so, time. Okay. So. All, I got, all I got was... I actually I figured it out if you want to hear how, 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 how about you just write it write it down somewhere? So yeah, write it down and people then can... uh, maybe... Yeah, you can put it in and notes. Basically, the idea is that uh, Kinzo has been setting up all this anti-magic shit because he trapped Beatrice's soul into another person 30 years ago. That's what I got from it. Yeah, 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 yeah what, what, what he said, yeah. Okay, okay I would like okay. to ask, has soul transfer even been a topic brought up at all throughout this entire series? I've just assumed this because magic and ghosts... Okay, I would- wait, ghosts? What have ghosts appeared? Huh? Hmm. You didn't see Ghost Nappa in the last scene? No, I did not see Ghost Nappa in the last scene. I don't know what uh... you're talking There was, in the first and second chapters, mentioned that this place can have evil spirits and points because of the shrine and because- it, hang on, it's in my notes. Yeah, okay. Mention of that. Well, I feel like if soul transferring was a thing in this, it probably would have been foreshadowed a bit more. I feel like there'd be something we could possibly address. brought up in episode Wait, two. Like Enzo- that was the, uh, <laughs> Wait, soul transfer? I transferring? Not, not soul transfer. <laughs> Beatrice said to Battler that her soul was shut up in homunculi in episode two. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. That is, in fact, and- episode three. <laughs> Yeah, that is and oh, that is sorry. it. Whatever, y'all know what I mean. <laughs> the one okay. time. I, I would like to know what this def- what, because a, a homunculus is like a tiny person. Like the actual definition of a homunculus. The idea of a homunculus here described implies a person of artificial nature as opposed to a normal organic birth. Alright, because like a actual like like a homunculus, like an actual one, is like just a tiny person. And kind of took on a different definition later on. Uh, homunculus has been used for different things in throughout different parts of history. Basically, what I posted in general is what homunculi are. Boom! I found it! Remember back in Chapter 2. Whenever everybody, whenever we had the minor scene involving Canon and 
uh, Jessica and Battler was musing about Rosa's argument about one of them being the wolves and the sheep. They were present as ghosts right there, and they could see everything. Yeah, that, that happened. And back in chapter one, or at least earlier in the chapter, Beatrice told Shannon that the mirror that was at least in the Shinto shrine was even there to help ward off the evil of the spirits and the energy on the island. So we can assume, or at least I could, I guess, because this is another theory of mine, and it could just be wrong, that there are indeed evil spirits on there, and ghosts can possibly exist on Rokenjima. I would like to make a, a question that can either be confirmed or denied, if need be. Is it, whenever it's talking about spirits, can it be talking about, like, energies, or is it, like, do they actually mean spirits as in ghosts? I feel like, like, I'm wondering if, like, the Black Witch, okay, I'll say it for you guys, Evatris, is a ghost, or could it be separate from a ghost, because it seems like it's, like, a, like a com combination of energy, more specifically, than an actual ghost? Oh, it was a split off from a conscience, so I'm not sure if that consider considered a spirit or not. Do you mean I'm a combination? Like, oh, okay. Because a commendation would be like did I say an award. Did I say com commendation? I meant common combination. I'm just imagining like the Fight Club people, like they're talking about ghosts now. <laughs> like I'm not sure if like Evatris is considered a spirit or not, or, or a go like or she's like because I don't think she's a ghost. Kinda she is, but that's because of how witches have power when they're not human formed. Is this a confirm or deny? Well, that wait, been... wait, 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 kind of Is this a confirm or deny? It's kind of been confirmed. Oh, yeah, confirmed that... Guys, inner circle. Oh, sorry. Uh, what? Uh, uh, that's that's the question again. My my question was: Is like, would Eva Trust be considered a spirit? Like. Uh, or it's like, can that be something you can say? Because I'm, I'm not really sure what they're going by by spirits. Because is a witch. She's a witch. She's a witch. Yeah, she's a witch. All right. She was... Ivatris is a yeah, witch, witch given form uh, by dearth of winning the uh, epitaph of Beatrice. All right, she's figured... essentially a tulpa. Okay, no. I don't know what that is, but I okay. She was like, I, she seemed like a co combination of like bad energy. Or something. Yeah, it, a tulpa oh, is basically a homunculus that you make out of thoughts. Yeah, and that's it's what, usually that's what... a negative one. I mean, I called it that because it was created out of uh, Ava's greed. That's why Avatris was born. Yep. Out of, her, out of her bad vibes. And she later on became the embodiment of hatred. Wait, okay, so now Crimson is saying it's a spirit. I, I, I don't know. What, what are you... Manifated from um, your spirits. The, the thing Manifested? I'm just... I'm just curious what it means by bad spirit. Like, whenever Kaneko is bringing up spirit, I'm wondering, can spirit be, like, things other than ghosts? Aren't the Tulpa thing, is not, oh, the Tulpa I, thing is not something you should take seriously. I just said that it sounds sort of like it. I, I don't know. I feel like there can be other definitions of spirit other than ghosts, but maybe I'm wrong. So, if there, unless there's anything else to add, I think we will uh, cap it off with Tulpas, I guess? No, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Spooky Everyone? ghost. Josh, Everyone? do you have any theories? <laughs> I'm not gonna share. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanna make sure. I just wanna make I just wanna make sure. Spooky Double confirm. Everyone's gotten everything they wanted to say out. Because, like, you know, it's the end of the, the questions arc. And we're gonna be like, Trucking into the the answers are Friday. Uh, I mean, y'all ain't want to discuss any of those uh those back and forth red truths a little no, bit. Amy? No more questions, only answers coming up. Mm. Oh, I was right. gonna add, I was gonna add one more thing for my thing. Reason. Yes, you can right. actually make a person's stomach exploded, but you have to do chemicals for that. I assume I mean, this can... is in relation to the bomb idea. Yeah, small bomb. Yes, that yes, guy. Yes, that you guy. Can actually... Yeah, you can actually do that. Certain chemicals can actually make your stomach explode, especially if it contains water. Okay, but mm -hmm. Lambda, yeah. Delta, I guess, well, I guess she just said that there were no bombs, but she seemed pretty adamant that there was no internal explosions. You know, you keep saying Lambda, Delta, but um, it's, it's funny how you keep saying that name. Like, I, I think you're trying to say Satika? Banned. 
She's there. <laughs> Shelly, we're, we're, we're talking about Igarashi. Don't make me get the red truth. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make us take out the red ban button. Is the, is the stream over? <laughs> no. The stream will be over as soon as we want We're it to be done. over. Also, sure. she never did a red truth denying that. She just said it was ridiculous that he said that, but she never denied it. Alright. Again, Crimson uh, is sharing their theories. We'll let him go. That's also, fine. a kind. Of, also, that is a quick way to basically make it into a candy that somebody could eat accidentally or purposely as a murder plot. Just right. so you guys know, I really am joking with the Satiko no, shit. No, no, no. I will oh, turn it out if it's annoying. No, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it it just fits so well. Damn it! <laughs> it, it it's not I Igarashi. I, I know mean, it's not. <laughs> okay, kind of go. Made them look exactly like the same. It is a red herring. Also, Lambda doesn't really look that much like Sudoku. Uh. So, now I'll go ahead and piece together the rest of my stuff with the three, with the four Umi quizzes that B has. Hey, B. Oh shit! Quick question on the oh, quizzes, by the way. Wait. Oh shit! Wait. Wait. Someone actually looked. Huh? Okay, oh, go fuck. ahead. I have to spit it. I have to spit it. <laughs> like on top, oh, please. Fuck. It's not a question like that. It's just, are the quizzes going to be posted for all of us to answer and see our answers? In they are. Or? Well, no, like you just do solve them on your own time. No, yeah. I mean, whenever we have to upload our answers onto Discord. Uh, I think I'm... it would just be discussed between the inner circle. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm not exactly... Do I just send the documents to you through DM, or do I post yeah, I them on the thing, or, or what? To me. You can put them in... If you guys want to, you can put them in uh, the B corner. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Wait, Gives us a chance to see each other's own answers, I guess. Mm -hmm. Have these quizzes notes. stop being optional? Well, no, they, <laughs> if the quizzes are optional. You do not have to do them. They are just help to help you If you think don't about finish them, we will release the hounds. If you don't finish them, you can't the give them the answer arc. No, it's not that serious. <laughs> it is no, a I just thing. found them very helpful. I do actually I just do a got lot really of recap frustrated in, because I had no idea any of the answers on the first arc stuff. That is, I mean, I yeah. Up. You don't, you don't okay. need to know the answers. It's just, it's, it's, use your, use your reasoning. Is yeah, and you don't have to answer all of them. It's just kind of like you, you can skip through, answer what you think you might know, like mm -hmm. whatever. It's just it's to help you think. There is nothing wrong with being wrong. If, if you are or not, or plus, even if you are or aren't wrong, we won't actually tell you whether you're right or not. It's just something for consideration. I wasn't asking about that. I was just saying, like, maybe they were just like notes or like sheet notes. It is the equivalent of a fun crossword puzzle in a newspaper. I will say the, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, to Livy, any fears, um, um, hey, do not be afraid to uh, share your theory if you are uh, afraid of it being wrong. It is okay to be wrong. Yeah. Yep. Not well, so much for making my theory that the font is true. Way too long. <laughs> also, yeah. how exactly are these like crosswords when we're thinking outside of the box? It is a, I was using an example Metaphor. of a fun little activity you can do on your own time that is unrequired. Bone, I was making a joke. It didn't sound like that? one. Were I'm you? Sorry. Crossword puzzle box? Thinking uh -huh. outside of the box? Okay. Uh, all right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. In the stream, Orange. I had a, sh I feel like I had a joke, sorry. Your life ends oh. 13 seconds from now, make your move. <laughs> Final In 13 time. seconds, you can start reading Beagle Source, available now. Follow me, on my, so in our of our own. Follow me on my Twitch, doing Dang and Rampa. Deltarune is on Wednesday. Shut up. Wait, Goodbye. Uh, <laughs>